Welcome to this special episode 10 of Pro Wrestling Talk. I am your host, Angel Rivera, alongside my co-host, who's, oh, down here, Miss Witchy Perfect, usually over here, so I'm like, oh. Yeah, I know, I'm over there, I'm, I'm, I'm that way. Yeah, I don't know why this week, but that's different, <laughs> that's fine. Alongside D, Deconstructing, as he's here most weeks now, and might as well be another co-host, and we have a special guest this week, it's Kit Cabello of Hardlands Media. Welcome to the show. Hey, baby, Congrats yeah. on your 50K. Yeah. We, we finally crossed the Rubicon to 50K, and look, uh, and now I had to place the order for the kilt, so for one whole week, I'll be doing the show straight. Monday Ooh. through Sunday, 9 a.m., that means doing the show, clipping, no excuses, no BS, you got to do the show, and dare I say it, I think we could get to 100,000 subscribers before the end of 2025, or before the end of 2024, oh, yeah. because you know what? I got a big thing happening at the end of 2024 that only Miss Witchy Perfect and a few others know about. And that's all Ooh. I can say. But some big things are happening, and I want to get to 100K before the end of 2024 that's for good. many, many freaking reasons. That's right. Ooh, yeah, that's Let's do it. it. We're going to do Yo, kid. It. Ready way, for I'm this pay- one? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ready for this one, kid? EC Dub. 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 By the way, bad cookies, Mr. Perfect was perfect, baby. You better recognize, you better recognize, Mr. Perfect was the greatest wrestler to ever live, baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's... <laughs> out. <laughs> out with well, you two. Out. Out. Wait, wait, wait. Out. So, since we're talking about the Montreal school job, on behalf of Sean <laughs> Michaels... Ah! This guy right here. I tried to watch the interview of his side of Heat with Bret Hart, and all I kept thinking was, "You motherfucker!" <laughs> I I have such I, a I'm, fucking liar, dude. He I lied. Could, I can, I could see a lot of sides how this played out because it, I mean it's easy. I mean because because we, we we haven't gotten into it yet, but it's easy to take one side over the other. But I can mm-hmm. understand maybe, and I, I know it's controversial to talk about Vince McMahon. I understood where Vince McMahon was probably coming from with the belt and everything else that happened, but it is really after what happened in Brett. Well, right. I, lo- I love, I love Bret Hart, you know, sure I, you, do. Mm-hmm. you know, but <laughs> you know, a, a yeah. lot of things could be done like more so, but then again, like, you know, Brett, Brett, you know, anyways, anyways, I, I don't want to take too much away from the conversation. So there. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And that's why we're here today. You know, we're going to talk about that. Um, I I just happened across it. I, I do the title match.com. And for some reason they posted uh, Shawn Michaels side of it. So I was just like, okay, I will try to get through this. I couldn't get through five minutes where I'm screaming at my screen, ready to punch it. And I'm just like, you gotta be fucking kidding me! Shut the fuck up, Sean! <laughs> He's always like, oh, it was... It was, it was, it was That's all he said, basically, for five minutes. I couldn't yeah, even get was... through five minutes. Oh, yeah, by the way, you were, were supposed to say, uh, Kit, <laughs> it was Trey. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Here, it's like this. Hold on. If you want to do it right, you got to do it right like this. Okay. <laughs> It's Trey. <laughs> they had me on Rico. They had me on gun charges. Snitches get it wasn't, snitches, baby. It wasn't me. Look, if I have a chance Fuck to speak that to Trey. Snitch. No. I, well, guess what? My character's coming back from the dead. How's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> like some soap opera. He just like, rises like, up. Like, what, like, what was all the blood for like, then? Like, hold on. Wait, wait. Trey picks up. Who's this? It's your boy, Kenny, Trey. <laughs> and I guess what? I got some hit men coming after you. I'm telling him to go after Trey. <laughs> there you go. Boom. <laughs> Boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> Boom goes the dynamite, mm. huh? Ha. Well, yeah, I mean, that being said, let's talk about what we came here to talk about because we only have a couple hours. So let's get into <laughs> we it. Only, we only have yeah. a couple. Just hours. a couple. <laughs> yeah. Just a couple. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, we have just a couple hours because. um. Apparently, Snow Himbo is going to go live at 10 Eastern instead of 1130. Okay. So we have to kind of, you know, we don't have the time. We, or we, we're not that extra time this week, so it's fine. Gotcha. But yeah, today we're here to talk about November 9th. Let me say November 9th, 2000, to number 9th, 1997. What? Yeah, I was going to say 2000. 
Yeah, not no. Too <laughs> Did I miss something? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Which um, <clears throat> happened that was called an infamous moment in pro wrestling history called the Montreal Screwjob. So right. that was between uh, that was a match between Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels for the world for the WWF Championship. And we will be saying WWF a lot tonight for younger viewers because that's what it was at the time. So that's, mm-hmm. what, that's what it was called back in our day. Yeah, I was 11 as years it, old. As it should be. I think uh, yeah. you just turned 11 there, Angel, in 97. Um, yeah. D, you were an old man. <laughs> I think I was in, in this country. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Kit was I mean, 12. <laughs> And I, 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 that was my last year of high school. If I could think about it. As a matter of fact, I just graduated okay. high school. Okay. Oh, okay. Kid well, was twelve. Was <laughs> the rest oh, of us were eleven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, so I was the old man. I was the old man in the group. Okay, yeah, twelve years old, probably. Yeah. Oh my god! But, but, but I'll never forget because because here's the thing: before the internet, or at least before the internet became the force that it was, I remember back in the day, like uh, you know, grocery stores when like you know there was a magazine section. There was wrestling magazines there, and I'll yeah. never forget how many people were picking up that article about the Montreal screw job. Right. I remember, and the thing is, like some stores ba- back in the day, like hey, this isn't a library; either you buy it. Or you don't, but everyone was reading it. And I remember one time I was a kid, like I was reading it, like looking at this, like what the heck, what's going, what, what happened, what? And every magazine, because because if you were around back in the day, those magazines were like tomes of the gospel. Okay, yeah. Pe- 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 people don't remember, but that's that's how it used to be. That's how you used to get the news back in the day. And that I miss it. There's 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 a there's a, there's a charming simplicity to it all. Yeah, and I'm not sure who actually watched live that night, but I, I think I did. I know I did. No, I was watching WCW. I'm, so I'm I'm, I'm going to be the Kurt Hennig and how Rick Rude responded to. By the way, just a quick shout out. Uh, today, unfortunately, is, yes, my birthday, but it's also the mm-hmm. passing of Rick Rude, who accidentally OD'd uh, today in 1999. So a little shout out to Rick Rude. We miss you. And, yeah. R.I.P. Condolences is family. Ravishing. Yeah, but exactly. also, but also, <laughs> but also, folks, please, please be sure to smoke responsibly. Don't smoke and drive. Don't drink and drive for four twenty. Smoke them if you got them. No, yeah, smoke don't them if you that. got them. If if you're safe, also, but don't smoke and drive. Don't do that. Uh, also, please like and subscribe. That's also very important too. As That's you something should. You need to do that. <laughs> but seriously, that was I watched it that night and. I'm like, okay, great match so far. This is great. Okay, like normal. Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart were, they had chemistry. They their matches were always like, I mean, I couldn't keep my eyes off. They were great. Anyways, towards the finish, I'm like, why is Shawn Michaels trying to do a sharpshooter? He's never done it in his life. <laughs> and Bret had like, to help him. Yeah, there's something strange. He switched I'm, his I'm foot. Looking, if you watch yeah. real carefully, mm-hmm. he switches his foot because Sean didn't know how to put on. He didn't know how to do guys. it. Yeah. He, didn't he didn't know how to do the shit. You know, Bret yeah. had to help him. He didn't know how to do it, so he's like, "That's weird. Why is Sean? He never does submission. He's more like the high flyer, fancy type right. of wrestler." Which today you say that it's you know these the Will Ospreys and those shitty wrestlers. Shawn Michaels was a hundred times better wrestler than them, and I wasn't even a fan. But I digress. Anyways, he goes into the sharpshooter, and all of a sudden <laughs> I see I see fucking Earl Hebner like doing this. I'm like, "Why doing is Earl this, Hebner yeah. doing that?" It's like. And then he mm-hmm. goes for the bell, and it's like Bret Hart never gave up. I could tell because he was trying to reverse the sharpshooter spot, and I was like, "What happened?" <laughs> oh, wow. Literally, I'm like, "Jr. Yeah. is like, what, I, what happened?" I'm like, "Was that?" I, 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 it went off air right after that, and I'm like, "And I saw Michael's- an interview with Earl Hepner because uh, yeah. he had a new book coming out, so uh, I think it's Wrestling News. Uh, check them out if you can on YouTube." Uh, they follow me on X now, but um, they did an, an interview with Earl Hepner and he said, you know, uh, Vince said, you know, if you want your job, Earl, guess what you're going to do? And so Earl had to make the, the decision. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, you know, I had to sit there right next to the plane uh, with Brett and, you know, hey, uh, he said, Earl, you're not going to ring the bell, are you? You're not going to count me down. He said, no, Brett, I'm not. And he never did, but mm-hmm. that still was very hard for Earl Hepner mm, to. Bad. 
I mean, he hated Vince McMahon after that. He told Vince basically go fuck himself. Well, yeah, well okay, did. wait, wait. Okay, so so I guess I'm going to get some heat for this one. So look, I understand maybe the need to oh, of the actions done against Bret Hart because let's face it, WCW at that point before it went under, before Ted Turner lost his power and before, you know, he, he had that merger with the other company to make, you know, where where it removed him. You know, WCW was the front and center show. It was getting the views. It was getting, you know, the money. People were flocking to it over WWF. And then when you have the world, you know, the women's world heavyweight champion on WC on from WWF on WCW throwing that belt into the trash bin. I mean, Medusa. yeah, that is. And yeah, that was Medusa who did it, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, you know, and let's face it. All those belts have have importance. They 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 symbolize not only the brand but the history of said uh, entity, right? And mm -hmm. yeah. say whatever you will about Vince McMahon, right? But he had to care about his brand. And imagine, just imagine for, I mean, it would go down in history forever, but imagine if, let's say, Bret Hart was the world heavyweight champion, the WWF belt, throwing it in the trash can. Yeah, but that he wouldn't have done that. Yeah, 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 but still, there yeah. was. How, did did I mean, Vince know there. that? The yes. thought was there. The thought was always <clears throat> there. Now, may, okay, Brett is a man of honor. I will, I will give him that. But Vince, no, knowing who he is and probably all the shady stuff he has done, he's probably thinking, no, no, he would, <clears throat> no, no, I can't risk it. I can't risk it. That already happened to the women's championship belt. I can't have that happen to the WWF heavyweight champion. I got to do everything in my power to protect it. Was it over the top? Yes. Is it understandable why he acted the way he did? Of course, because you know Eric Bischoff was foaming at the mouth to probably get that same scenario happen to that pedigree belt, the front and center belt. Could you imagine yeah. what would happen to WCW yeah. if the if, if they had the WWF Heavyweight Championship belt and threw it in a dumpster? That was a risk too great. And while Bret, hit, while Bret Hart, man of honor, Vince McMahon could not risk it. And it's and it's understandable why he couldn't. And that's all I, I want to say about kind things about Vince, knowing his shady history. And I don't want to get the strike. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> no, as long as we don't talk about specific stuff yeah. or do like this or yeah. that. Um, apparently, that that's shocking content for YouTube. But anyway, yeah. mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I see that perspective. And uh, Angel and I know that because we've listened to Jim Cornette's omnibus about mm -hmm. um, – you know, the Montreal screw job. And I agree with, uh, so I'm just going to push back just, a, just a little nudge, you know, just a little mm -hmm. nudge back. Um, I, you know, uh, Brian last had brought that up and unfortunately Jim said, no, it really had, cause there was no reason why Brett would do that. Okay. Brett was not that kind of person. Medusa didn't really get, care about the business and she knew that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. women's wrestling, where, yeah, it didn't really draw that much, but it was still something that people came to see. Oh, no. And it was sort of like a, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. Oh, oh I read that comment. On. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. C continue with your point. Wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Over. I saw it, too. Um, oh, no. That's first of all, like. <laughs> I would not be surprised, Bad Cookies. I would not be surprised. It would not shock <laughs> me if that was true. Um. So, to... To relay the point is that um, it's really Vince didn't trust Eric Bischoff. So yep. Eric Bischoff comes out on his show and mm. says, I got the world heavyweight champion. You might as well just piss in the face of Vince McMahon, fuck his wife and screw his dog or, at the same time. Mm. It's really the the whole thing of trusting Eric Bischoff, which you could not do because Eric Bischoff lies. Let's put it that, you know, plain and yeah. story. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but it's, 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 it's where to the point of Vince didn't trust Eric Bischoff. And I mean, there's just no way I couldn't see Brett doing that. And I don't think Brett would ever do that. Um, and I think Vince just didn't trust Eric Bischoff. I, I, okay. So, 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 so just my pushback, cause I think we're both in agreement here. I'm just trying to see this through the eyes of Vince McMahon. I know. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Again. Not, not a fan of Vince, right? But looking at the situation at hand, Eric Bischoff is on cloud nine. WCW, front and center. It is a hot product. It's bringing in the views. It's bringing in the revenue. Vince McMahon, could, as you pointed out, can't trust Eric Bischoff. And by proxy, 
he could not trust Bret Hart. And now Bret Hart, he now Bret, he respects the business, and he comes from a family that respects the business. Because I'm pretty sure if he did that, I'm pretty sure many of his family members, either some would maybe supportive and say like, "Yeah, that's cool," but I'm, I'm willing to bet majority would be like, "Why would you do that? You taunt you." That that is forever going to resonate with us because what you got petty mm-hmm. at the boss. That is a champ. That is a belt. Like there, there is a code in wrestling that goes all the way back because we talked about it, like the carnival days. Wrestling has its yeah. carny origins. You just don't do that. That is like a huge sin that's going to send you to the farthest deeps of hell. Now Bret Hart wouldn't have done it, but Vince couldn't trust the situation. And Vince McMahon, being right. a cutthroat yeah. businessman, he made his correct decision in order to stop a potential scenario from playing out. Because at the end of the day, what if Eric Bischoff was able to say, hey, I got a seven-figure dollar check right here. No taxes, nothing from Ted Turner. Hell, millionaire Ted might even give you a couple other millions if you get that WWF belt and throw it in the trash can. Because Ted Turner was also at that point, number one, very successful businessman. There's so many scenarios playing out probably in Vince McMahon's head that he was probably manic. And it's and that's sure. not good to say that. So I hear I so I I obviously I, I hear your point, but I just wanted to say like from the perspective of Vince McMahon, he yeah, couldn't take that risk. And, and really, uh, you have to say it was more Vince's fault anyway, because yeah. I mean he had come to Brett two months before this happened and reneged on his uh, contract, said I'm not going to pay you. Go back and talk to Eric Bischoff. Yeah. So and when I was listening to the Omnibus again, uh, Jim Cornette makes a good point. You literally should have taken the belt off him when you were going to renege on his on his championship That's the big belt. Thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Jim, 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 Jim was right about that. Right. So I mean, it, when it comes right down to it, Vince is at fault here too. He should have taken the belt off of Brett and given it to anybody: Taker, Cam Shamrock, mm. anyone who Brett respected. Mm. Um, and literally, he they he would have given the belt to anyone. Yeah. But Shawn Michaels, and he was saying, uh, and Brian Lass was like, well, why didn't he? And then Jim had said, well, it was already kind of booked. You're pretty much already set in stone. It was Shawn versus mm-hmm. Brett at Survivor Series. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so, like I said, when I was watching the um, Shawn Michaels side, I guess, um, uh, I could just barely, I just wanted to punch my screen, but okay. Um, <laughs> but he Not glossed Shawn over. Michaels, Not Michaels. <laughs> he, he basically glossed Little over mastermind. a bunch of stuff. Right. Hi, mastermind. But yeah, like um, he glossed over a whole bunch. Of, he, he basically said uh, things didn't happen that Brett said happened. Uh, you know, uh, oh, he, uh, he said that uh, Brett was talking down about him on in uh, the Calvary Sun and also in promos. I said, hello, uh, you said it was okay for Brett to do that. And then Brett would say he would come back and it looked like Shawn Michaels lost his dog. That, you know, and then, you know, um, he was talking about, oh, about the sunny days. I went, hello, Shawn, you were fucking sunny, mm-hmm. not for heart. Yeah, that, that, that was a crazy story. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, there, there, there well, is. Thank you for joining I, us. Make sure you I, like and subscribe. Because I, I am seeing in the chat here too. Because you know, chat does have a point. Old man Barker, I see your point about how the lawyers wouldn't allow it, but knowing, because 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 sitting through a lot of business meetings myself, especially with some radio station heads and a few people in TV, and it's just uh, you know, if it could be done, mm-hmm. and the lawyers just do the do do the do the shield wall. If it's if it wasn't Bret Hart that was going to throw it in the trash can. Imagine Eric Bischoff was, hey Vince, I have your belt. Woof, put it in the trash can. He would have. I'm I'm not saying they would. The, the lawyers probably would not have allowed it, but I'm saying what what brings in good TV? What brings in good ratings? And it's and it's and it's all about the views, especially in that day and era in the '90s when before the internet, TV eyes, everybody's focusing on it. Of course, the lawyers wouldn't allow it, but there would have been some loophole in there because I'm just thinking about good TV and stuff that resonates with people. Like, dude, did you see what happened on WCW? Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, well, again, again, we're, 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 we're all speaking Every. hypothetical. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Right. But uh, old man Barker, I see your point. You're absolutely correct. But I'm just saying Thank like, you. no, knowing how TV executives act, especially people like Eric Bischoff who had Ted Turner, like in his back pocket, mm-hmm. not that he owned right. Ted Turner or anything like that, but Ted right. Turner, it, they, <clears throat> And let's be frank here. Ted Turner and um, Eric usually, were tight, right? Uh, happened. Maybe. It could have happened, but let's be frank here. Um, you know, 
Eric Bischoff was spending money with WCW, getting these guys in like million dollar contracts, two yeah. mi- to like one to three million dollar contracts, and, and no spending one was money him. like a drunken sailor. Yeah. You know, nobody was stopping oh. him either. I mean, blank check, baby. Thank yeah. you, Coco. And and Thank and, and, you. and it was, yeah, and like I don't mean to cut you off. And, and and that's and that's and that's where I'm saying like you know. Can, could you imagine how much revenue and money would have came in if there was that scenario, if he had the belt, mm. what he could have done if Bret Hart did that, if Bret Hart really did that. Now, Bret Hart probably would not have done that, but then again, you never know. But there was that scenario, and I can understand where Vince was coming from, but that's, again, I don't want to be defending Vince because I feel gross already even talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> like no, 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 I agree Vinny. because... Yeah, I mean, I agree because it was, uh, you know, Jim Cornette was on the creative team at this time, and he was the one that's saying, well, Brett doesn't want to do this. Sean doesn't want to do that. Brett doesn't want to do this. Brett doesn't want to do that. Uh, And finally, you know, because, I mean, Jim Cornette was uh, with Shitstain, as he calls him, or Vince Russo. Mm. Um, he, he was, he gained a lot of weight. He was eating uncontrollably and he Mm -hmm. was just frustrated with the whole ordeal and just sat back in his chair and said, God damn it, Vince, it's your belt. Double cross him. (laughs) They should have, Vince should have taken the responsibility of getting the belt off of Brett when he was ready to renege on his contract. Right. That's what this comes down to. I just want to point out, real. Uh, so my story real, uh, on that situation. So I was on the internet, so I did not watch it live. But I remember going to this Hello. website uh, late night, and um, and you know, so whatever reason the, the the internet was slow on that website, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? And then once everything slowed down by midnight, then that's when I learned about the uh, infamous Montreal school job. So I'm gonna go with. Uh, so you guys make good points I, I i would say that yeah i think that was one of those things that eric bishop would have done he would have grabbed that bell and say hey listen look who we got i don't think that Bret hart would have uh, dropped the belt though no what what mcmahon was worried about was him saying bischoff saying because if you remember he had that monday he had a special announcement bischoff mm-hmm. so right. that's what vince was trying to he's like oh my god he's going to announce he signed Bret hart and he's wwf champion what well, i got to mm-hmm. get the belt off him tonight before and I think that was the week where they came out yeah. and sang oh canada wasn't yeah, it or that's... was that the week after no it was yeah no, it, 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 was... it was that week before survivor series and and they came out and were singing oh canada yeah. i know because kurt was singing the best he was the best singer of them all you know yeah, um, then, then they then that's why vince was like i get the belt off him because bischoff's yeah. going to announce that we've signed the wwf champion Bret hart right. and it destroys any reputation we have left because right. our, our even our champion doesn't want to be with us, right? So Vince's um, saying was perception is reality. So if the perception was that WWF champion doesn't want to be in WWF, then we we, we mean shit. So we get mm-hmm. belts off him now, no matter what Brett says. And as old man Barker says in the chat, Triple H said, if he doesn't want to do business, we need to do it for him. I've heard that. I'm sure he's yeah. I'm sure he said that. Unfortunately, that. it was mm-hmm. again. I mean, everyone's taking credit for the Montreal screw job, but um, I I do believe it was Jim Cornette who actually came up with the idea um, because double crosses are as old as wrestling. And he was talking right. to Meltzer when they were still mm-hmm. talking and Meltzer wasn't cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Um, they were still talking and they were literally saying, you know, I mean, double crosses are as old as, you know, the Carney days. So Cornette, uh, you know, said, when he said that, God damn it, Vince, it's your belt, double cross him. Mm-hmm. Vince went, okay, so we'll go back to reality now. So mm-hmm. when a few, when this was just about to happen, and I think it was like a day or two before this happened, literally, um, you know, uh, Cornette leaned over and said, Vince, do you have a finish for this match? And he said, yes, and that's it. Yes, he I didn't do. elaborate. Mm-hmm. He yeah. did not elaborate, and he didn't say, okay, what is it, Vince? So no one really knew what was going down until it happened. And and when it did happen, Cornette was, I mean, what I guess what happened was Vince went to uh, Shawn Michaels and Triple H the night before and told them in the hotel room 
But then Jared Briscoe had to somehow show Sean how to get into the sharpshooter, but he really didn't know how to do it. So if you see that match, you'll see Brett switches his leg and actually had to help uh, Sean get horrible. him into the move. Right. Yeah. Even I um, question how do why is he doing a sharpshooter? Right. So. And and when Cornette's watching it and it went down, he's like, "Oh shit, that's oh, my shit. finish!" And he my beat spot. Earl Hetner out of the <laughs> building. He's like, "Oh shit, that's my oh, spot!" Oh shit, it's going down. And, and the finish. Oh, and I'm he out. didn't know if people were going to be hurt. mad at yeah. him or want to beat him up or whatever. So I mean, you know, it, it's like Cornette you know, beat Hebner out of the building. <laughs> he was out there. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, Greg, with his Greg, Greg is like, are we going to talk about Shitstain lying about coming up with the idea? Oh, yeah. I, I, I oh, Russo. That. Oh, God, God damn it. Do, 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 we, do, we have to talk about, do we have to? Because, <laughs> no, man, that, that's no, the guy who gave uh, – what's, what, what's his name? What's the name of the actor? <laughs> The, the, David the, Arquette. Oh, David, David Arquette. Arquette. Yeah. The, the, the golden belt, the most beautiful belt ever in wrestling history. You might as well have just slapped every other <laughs> yeah. uh, champion in the face or pissed in their face when he did that. And he made himself the champion and he met he made uh, David Arquette. You might as well have just pissed in everybody else's face who was a champion. That's God, one person. And, and, that's, and that's a beautiful belt too, by the way. Yeah, How that's my favorite belt. <laughs> Especially it when is. it had NWO on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, How but dare you? That, that's, that's one person. N-W-O, N-W-O for life. life. Yeah. yeah. I was like, life, baby. Let's go for life. Person. That's one person I don't believe is Vince Russo. I mean, he's that's the right. oh, I, no, I, I never believe Vince it. Russo. Highly I mean, never believe him. So, Highly questionable. So how, how are you going to convince Bret Hart to let Shawn Michaels put him in the sharpshooter, you moron? I mean, there was no right. way that Vince Russo was able to convince him to do that. And that's why Jared Briscoe had to help him because you had someone who Jared Briscoe didn't even know how to do it. He was just like, I guess, follow what Brett is going to do. And we'll just talk Brett into helping you do it. It was stupid. And uh, it it just didn't make any sense. Yeah. Jim Cornette speculates that Vince told um, Pat Patterson, who was the agent for the match. He was like, I want to do a spot where we, you know, Brett, Sean puts Brett in the sharpshooter and then Brett reverses it. And then that's how Brett. Spot and, on. And then Pat right. Patterson right went and told Brett is, okay, yeah, we can do that spot. It'd be a cool spot. I'm reversing it and putting into the sharp, my version of the sharpshooter. So it was, even though Pat Patterson, I think he didn't, Jim Cornette speculates he didn't know. Yeah, my Vince understanding would, he didn't know. Vince, Vince would protect Pat Patterson like that. He didn't Not Jerry, to Jerry knew. It was supposed to Jerry knew. Oh, Jerry Briscoe, Briscoe. definitely. Briscoe yeah. definitely knew because he was the one who um, Vince was like, "I'll oh, teach Shawn Michaels some moves." Yeah, he, he had case, to teach you know, Shawn yeah. Michaels some moves. <laughs> yeah, to protect but, so um, right. the one person that didn't know was Bruce. Bruce no, didn't Bruce know. didn't know. And he actually mm-hmm. was like kind of put out. He's like, "Vince, why didn't you tell me?" And and Vince said, "Because the more you don't know, the better off you'll be." Right. You can at least say that you didn't know. Briscoe had to teach Shawn Michaels how to defend himself. But even that's then, right, because Bret yeah. Hart would have kicked the shit out of him. Even, and, even, and he should have. I mean, as soon as he because that that was the idea. Oh, let's put him in the sharpshooter and, you know, have uh, Brett reverse it. And he he said, no, because Brett will get up out of that sharpshooter and beat the living shit out of Shawn for real. <laughs> yeah. And he did that before, my understanding. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Backstage. Right. Before backstage long. Yeah. With the hair. Well, sure. Yeah, we'll show you. Wrong. But. but but, he, but even then, too, can you imagine just the overall feeling as soon as you see it all get played out, everybody's emotions, what they are going through seeing that mm-hmm. once that happened. You, 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 you know for a fact, it's like, Jesus Christ, you dropped a bomb in the middle of New York City. No one's, I mean, granted, granted, it didn't take place in New York City, so, but it's like dropping sure a bomb in mm-hmm. New York City. Like, what the hell? Like, nothing's ever going to be the same again. No one's ever gonna look at Vince McMahon, but that's also what led to the creation to the heel character of Vince McMahon, too. The character, yes. character. Well, well, yes and no because I, I, I'm not sure you guys know this, but before '97, um, Vince was trying out that Mr. McMahon character in Memphis mm-hmm. in '93 or '94. He was trying, kind of trying out that character when he was working in Memphis. He was like he was on screen character, and he was going against Jerry Lawler, I, I believe. Mm-hmm. So. He had the Memphis heavyweight title and everything, cutting promos as Mr. McMahon before even that character came about, like Mm -hmm. a few years before. So I think he was planning to become on-screen character anyways, but the Montreal Screwjob helped speed that up. (laughs) Yeah, and and it's funny to hear Jim Cornette say, oh, well, Vince thought he was going to be a babyface. 
There was no way to that become was, a baby ridiculous. face after that. You literally yes, exposed it was the Lawler. business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you literally exposed the business and you literally just spat in the face of all the fans because the fans, they hated the, the finish. They hated it. And, you know, um, uh, Brett says, you know, it, it was, I just was so mad that I wrote mm-hmm. W. C W and air. no one had ever yeah, done was, that before, right. but he was just so pissed off. Mm-hmm. And it was Taker who actually said, "You know what, Vince, you uh, he you owe him a punch." And so yeah. uh, he went to Bret Hart's locker room and uh, sat there. And Bret uh, Bret said, "If you're still here while I'm out of the shower, I'm going to punch you right in your mm-hmm. face." Mm-hmm. And he did, and he took it like a man. So Vince kudos did- to Vince. I don't like Vince McMahon either, but kudos no. to Vince. But, yeah, you know, I mean, he, but also, uh, so he's I mean, a leader. Yeah, he's well, a leader. That's the difference. Well, well, no, also Vince McMahon had some shit because, uh, you know, let's face it, mankind. He was there. You know, you had Mick Foley, and he was saying, "Hey, fuck that, I'm leaving out of yeah, here," and he everyone else should. Leave. Yeah, Mick Foley wanted to leave, and uh, Taker, who ran the locker room. Yeah, mean, he exactly. he was he was, he was if, if 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 everybody yes, feared Vince, it, everybody really understood Taker because Taker was the one who said, "Like, look." Hey Vince, I'll run the running. locker room, but I can't. I can't control these dudes because mm-hmm. every single one of them is gonna leave. You have to take that punch. You have to do something. You owe him that, and mm-hmm. that's what needs to happen. And there was no way Vince could walk out of that. And see, the thing is, like, mm-hmm. also, uh, what's it? Bad? Uh, no, it's old man Barker who wrote in here. Want to give acknowledgement to his chat here yeah. too? The chat. Taker didn't know. Bruce and Taker were mad at each other, thinking the other knew, and they bu- probably maybe yeah. that was the whole plan. Like. The less people that knew, the better. Because imagine if Taker did know. Do you think Taker would have allowed that to happen? Hell no. No, no. no. There's no way he could have known. Not at all. No, Taker Taker had to control something that he didn't know about, and he didn't know who to trust. So he went to Vince, obviously, to say, like, hey, look, you owe me that punch. Yeah, you you owe me that punch, right. (laughs) That's the only way I can control this room. Yeah. He was like. and he Come did, on, Vince, you know? get in the locker room and explain yourself to Brett. And he did. And that's why he, you see that shiner on yeah, uh, Vince's on face Raw. on yeah. the next mm-hmm. night on Raw yeah. when he does that Brett screwed Brett interview. The Brett mm-hmm. screwed Brett. But that was the start of Mr. McMahon, me. the evil uh-huh. billionaire, and then the Austin thing. And, you know, that's what it starts. Yeah. That's when it took off. Yeah. Austin 316, baby. Accidentally. <laughs> Accidentally. You know, because Vince thought, like, he, like you said, he thought he'd be the baby face, which was yeah. absurd. It's like, you're you're the rich billionaire who screwed mm-hmm. over most of the people's hero in Canada. They're baby yeah. face. And you expect right. to be the baby yeah. face somehow yeah. off of that? Yeah. No, you you screwed fuck you, you screwed our hero. We hate you. Yeah. And that's it. They're like, okay, let me run with this then. And for years <laughs> after that, and uh, um, uh, you know, I I can remember a couple years after that in ninety nine, uh, whenever they would uh book in Canada and go to Canada and have shows, they would you scream, Brett. You screwed yeah, Brett. Brett, you screwed you Brett. Screwed Brett. Brett. You screwed up, wow. By 99, Shawn Michaels was a babe. No, he was a baby face. He's authority figure by then. Yeah. But every time he would show up as a commissioner, like, you screwed Brett. It's like, oh. like yeah. you, you can never get past it, which he. <laughs> well, no, and they, uh, they took uh, basically, <clears throat> and I agree with Brett because I've seen Hitman Wrestling with Shadows. They basically took his Hitman character. Took him out in like an old pasture, like an old horse, an old racing horse that they couldn't use anymore, and shot him in the head, basically. Yep. Remember the major, yeah. the major Bret Hart when Shawn Michaels said, "Yeah, oh, Bret Hart." Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, not major. I mean, the, 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 the small Bret Hart. You know, like. <laughs> and, and that, in that, he's like, I can't believe that. But what got me was the whole thing about Shawn Michaels uh, saying "Sunny Days" to Bret Hart. Because it uh, wasn't Bret Hart screwing Sonny, right. it was Shawn yeah. Michaels. And that was and according like, really to Sonny, um, he proposed marriage to her, basically. Right, right. And, and, and yeah. she yeah. was yeah. messing around with on Chris Candido, and ru- yeah. he ruined that boy. Uh, he yeah. thought she walked on water, but yeah. she ruined him. And, and he was mm-hmm. in the shower so- one time, and she told this other wrestler, hey, let's do it. He won't know he's in the shower. That's oh, how much of a yeah. hoe she was. God, Sonny, mm-hmm. Sonny she, she pretty face that. looked like an angel. Mm-hmm. Was a at that time, at that time, yeah. at that time, yeah, uh huh, <laughs> yeah, at that time, she's just a, little, a little, yeah, yeah. Little these days, it's like really the sunny, uh, it's a sunny days, Brett, but you still 
couldn't get the job done. I, I, rem- I remember that promo. That, I, oh, come on, Sean. <laughs> yeah, he was projecting what he was yeah, doing I'm... with Sonny onto Brett, and it pissed Brett off, and for good reason. Brett wasn't doing anything. I, yeah, I, I mean, he slept with everybody, everybody else that moved, according to the book. It was in his book, book but... where Brett said, I couldn't hear what he was saying because of the crowd right. noise, which is why yeah. he had that face, like, what's he say? Mm-hmm. But when he got backstage, he, the other wrestler says, you, you, he said this, this, and this, and Brett's like, what? He's like, what the fuck? And he Try to confront him, but he left the arena or hit or something. You know, I don't know what he after that in his book, but it was like he probably would have kicked his ass then again. You know, that blew him in the second time. Hey, back mm-hmm. then I'll take Sunny. Back then I'll take a Sunny take. No, <laughs> you know what? You know what? Probably no. would have done that, baby. She would have probably would have nah. done that. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> the one, the one, the one who always captured my heart is is none other than the the great beauty herself, the queen of extreme. The beautiful Don Marie. I was like, Don wow. Marie. Mr. Don Marie. Perfect, baby. <laughs> Don he, Marie. Was, he actually Kurt was on. So I'll I'll just uh just Don Marie. Like, my my <laughs> boat <laughs> is the first Don one. Marie. Any any idea would have been better. I mean, this would have been better. You know, but by like, the time they said by yeah, uh according any to idea Cornette, would have been better. By the time they had come up with, well, have him drop it to Taker or Shamrock or someone else that Brett, uh, you know, uh, res- respects in, in as a mm-hmm. wrestler. I mean, they had already pitched the Shawn Michaels. They already had that uh, booked and advertised, so they couldn't go back mm-hmm. on it. So Luna Vachon was, was okay. I, uh, <laughs> she was that weird. was Vince's fault. It was like... <laughs> Vince really thought he can get that match in the ring. You know, I, everybody told him they hate each other. I can get him in the ring. How are you going to get Brett and Sean to agree to do a, a match in the ring? Yeah. I, I Fabulous Moolah there. There you go, Kit. There's your woman. Hey, Fabulous hey. Moolah. <laughs> no, 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 no. May Young. May Young. Break your hip. May Young. Break your hip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys remember when, uh, what's her name? Uh, May Young. So she gave birth to that hand. I'm thinking, what is this? Oh, what God. are you oh, trying God. to yeah, do? Are you trying to ruin? Re- but that was a, a shit stain that? idea. Uh, that's yeah. Russo. Yeah, yep, Russo. that was a shit stain idea. That's a Russo thing. Russo. And Vince was like, oh, they get ratings? Okay. I mean, he didn't care at that point. He Vince, just wanted to beat WCW. <laughs> Vince, Vince Russo is, is a cancer. The only so, people, was a cancer, yes. The only they people who is, knew... Yeah. Only people people who knew that Jim was behind it. He was saying it is omnibus. It was uh it was Shawn Michaels. No, not Shawn Michaels. Um it was it was the both Vinces. They were in that meeting, Vince McMahon mm-hmm. and Vince Russo. It was he told JR he said right after, like he told JR mm-hmm. that he was the one behind it because they were mm-hmm. friends. And he told um He didn't tell a lot of people. He told he was Danny Davis. That, yeah, he, he literally told yeah. like two people because he was really afraid someone was going to beat the shit out of him. And he literally yeah. says, sorry, Brett. I mean, I have no animosity towards you. I love you. It's Sean I hated. Yeah. But, there was, you know, they there were, was reasons and consequences why he came up with that idea. You can count on one hand uh, who knew that Jim Cornette was the mind behind the Montreal It was the mind job. behind the, yeah. It was Danny Davis who ran o- OVW with. It was JR. It was um, both Vince's and... It was uh, somebody else. I'm forgetting who it is right now. But oh, Mick Foley. He said so. He, he told Mick Foley in order to convince him to come back. It was like, right. yeah, Mick. It was mine. You know, it was my. It was my finish. You know, I didn't know mm-hmm. Vince going to use it, but it was my yeah, finish. Yeah, because so. Vince had acted like, okay, now yeah. we're going to move on to something real, right? Yeah. He was like, okay, that's crap. Uh, we're going to move on to something mm-hmm. else. So I mean, honestly, Jim didn't know that it was going to happen until it happened. He's like, oh shit, that's my finish. I got to get the <laughs> fuck out of here. You know that's what he that's says on the omnibus. and he didn't know who he didn't know who knew. It's like, right. a, at least the, the I give credit to Vince. He never he took responsibility for it. it it's me. Mm-hmm. I did it. You know, I I did it. He never threw Jim Tornet under the bus or anybody else under the bus. It was me. You know? No, I, yeah, he he took it, almost full responsibility for it. And then you know the yeah. Swigglers used to come out and Triple H, Shawn Michaels, and of course Shitstain would come out and say, "No, oh, it was, it was me. me. No, who, it was me. I came up with it." We that's had to when get I, rid of Bret Hart. That's when I knew they were lying, especially Vuce Russo, because yeah, like, I mean Jim Cornette was like, "I'm sorry, that? Brett. I yeah. loved Brett. I I, I hated <laughs> Shawn Michaels. Everybody else did too, you know." And Cornette um, was no, like, I no offense, left. me. No offense. Hello. 
I would have loved to screw Shawn Michaels. That's what Jim Cornette said. Is right. I, yeah, I would have uh, loved to have Shawn, uh, right, if it was Shawn right, leaving. No, I would have right, screwed wait. him every way to Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're supposed to say no Diddy or something weird like that. <laughs> screw? <laughs> I was like, what you mean screw? No, nah, but, well, but let's uh, go. Well, double cross. Right, but um, um, so let's go. So Brett took a break uh, before. Right, um, WrestleMania. Or after okay. WrestleMania. He dropped, he dropped the WWF title to Sean, and then he right. went away for like nearly a year to do movies okay. and to take a sabbatical because Right, he, he also <laughs> did the um, Lonesome Dove. Uh, yeah, show, yeah, which yeah, that's I have true. downloaded so, yeah. off the internet. It's so good. Mm. So What's he funny left. Is uh, Bret Hart uh, when he was in Stampede, he was offered, "Do you want to be the hitman or do you want to be a cowboy?" And Bret goes, "I don't want to be a cowboy, so I'll be the hitman." Uh -huh. yeah, and yeah. and be it turns cowboy. out in Lonesome Dove, the the show, he <laughs> he's he a, cowboy. a cowboy. I'm like yeah, cowboy. cowboy. But you but said. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because because here's the thing. Like it's it's one thing to do like a movie role. It's another thing altogether to do like you know a oh, permanent I role. I yeah. You know? So it's like you want to be yeah. seen as a hitman. So but it, but he branches out. That, uh, Chris, Sorry, I'm oh, going Why two J? Oh fuck, Chris Jericho. He's oh, fucking fat oh, and he oh. isn't a wrestler. Yeah, that's what I thought too. <laughs> that the match was called too early, and then it was like, what happened? Mm -hmm. I mean, was Ever that and match the Greg? At that point. Yeah, yeah. It was like All what the happened, fans and even like, uh, well, Sean acted like it. He he knew what was going down. No, he knew. Sean knew. He had to. Have known. And Brett's kind of like looking around, going, "What the fuck? What happened?" Mm. And he spits in Vince's face, and, and he spits I'm like, in Vince's spit in, face. Why did he, he spit just in Vince's exposed face? the business? Now yeah. it's all <laughs> uh, a work mm. to everybody else. But you know, and uh -huh. then Sean's of course sitting in. No offense, the. But he's sitting in uh, Brett's yeah, yeah. Uh, locker room going, did you know about this, Sean? I swear no, to God, no. I didn't. I swear to I God, didn't I didn't. Oh, fuck you and your God. And okay. I want to point out real quick. Uh, <laughs> so they were filming that uh, behind, what, what was the Hitman name of that Wrestling Shadows. Yeah. Wrestling right. Shadows. So, so it caught a lot of things. I mean, hey, this, I, sometimes in politics, there's no coincidence. Some people speculate after that happened, whether it was a shoot or a work. Right, Scott Hall said that they Scott all were Hall in on it. Yeah. Yes, they were all in on it, even Bret Hart. I went, I don't think Bret would be pissed after all these years mm -hmm. still about that. I mean, he's right. still, yeah, him and Sean have kind of made up and him and Vince made up, but yeah. I still think that he's still pretty fat, uh, Pitt, sorry. He's still very pissed about it. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Bret. Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Brent. I but love you. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stretch yeah, it like yeah. the old man wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> Stu yeah. wanted to stretch everybody. Yes. That's the crazy part. Mm -hmm. Sean Thank McKenzie you. I know says right. Steph has been the right, most right so far. Okay, Thank well, you. we're all. Thank you. I appreciate that comment. Please <laughs> like and subscribe, though. And yeah, we all, you know, pretty much been saying the same stuff. But yeah, that wasn't much for you know, uh, Jeff Jarrett either. I do listen yeah. to his podcast, though, when he talks about Kurt. That's all I really listen for. Yeah. By the way, yeah. I just want to say uh, before we get into anything else. So here is the Kurt Hennig, Rick Rude side. Uh, Kurt, in many interviews, well, not many, but there are a few, has um, yes, that's admitted, true. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, he has admitted that uh, he was on Brett's side um, because Brett and him and Rick Rude and the well, pretty much the Hart Foundation, Owen, <laughs> Dog, Jim Nyhart, um, they all hung out together. So Rick Rude, Kurt, Brett. Owen, Bulldog, Jim Nyhart all were hung around, went to bars to, with each other. Um, I have a picture somewhere of uh, Kurt and Brett sitting in a bar, you know, drinking beer together. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, those were pretty much, they were friends, all of them. And as everyone knows, um, since it is Rick Rude's passing today, it is the anniversary. Um, it's also my birthday. But uh, I just... Happy um, birthday. Thank yes, you, dear. Indeed. Yes, Happy thank birthday. you. <laughs> um, so, Rick Rude, of course, uh, as everyone knows, or you may not know, but according to uh, Eric Bischoff, he basically said uh, to Bischoff, and this is Bischoff's own words, I'm coming back. It wasn't a request. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a question. Mm -hmm. It was, I'm coming back. And it was a yep. statement. And... 
that's kind of where you see the controversy of Rick Rude Rick on appearing Raw on both shows and Nitro because you know he comes out and says, uh, you know, I'm gonna use my uh, 15 uh-huh. minutes of fame, and you know he goes over and says Shawn Michaels never won the belt, he never took it from Bret Hart. Um, and then he says, you know, uh, he talks about Sting. You know, uh, apparently there was a, supposed to be heat between him and Sting, but there really wasn't. So uh, the yes. Kurt Hennig and mm-hmm. Rick Rude stance on the Bret Hart uh, Montreal screw job was that they were on Bret's side. Mm-hmm. Yes, and that's why Raw was taped in those days, or at least every other week were taped. <laughs> so, but I yeah. wanted to bring up something that um, Sean said, Mackenzie up here it said, I forgot to mention this. I mean, he, uh, also the other person Jim Cornette told was Dave Meltzer, which right. he mentioned oh, yeah, in the chat. Right. He called yeah. Meltzer and told him everything, but just keep it in confidence. And he did. It's before mm-hmm. they hated each other, but <laughs> <laughs> now they hate each other. But yeah, that's the other person that knew other, you know, other than the people I mentioned, but. <laughs> Yeah. Now, I also thought that he was like the Glenn Greenwell at that time with the uh, with yeah. the guy from Russia. What's his name? Was Snowden? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah a, I got sco- I got scoop. I'm about to break the thing. Um, no, it's very interesting because uh, I hear I hear a lot of people were, and I guess we could talk about the uh, uh, what happened the aftermath because a lot of wrestlers mm-hmm. left. Obviously, I mm-hmm. have all, I said Owen, which that that's an interesting story that he stood. Yeah, oh, but, you know what, leave. But, but, but you want to know what else is happening, too, during that time. is as, as while people are leaving, Vince is looking for replacements, and he found some people mm-hmm. from ECW. And a few other locations <laughs> to change the WWF would be proceeding going forward. And, right. you know, I mean, in many ways, while he did lose, like, the guard, like, originally, that was supposed to replace, like, people like Hulk Hogan and you know, uh, Diesel, Big Daddy Cool, and everybody else, you know, they said we get, uh, you know, the, the, the Attitude Cold. Era. Yeah, Stone yep. Cold. Yeah. Well, and the aftermath is, you know, Brett left. Uh, Owen tried to leave, but uh, Vince was making threats. Uh, you know, Brett can go, but Owen, you can't. And so I, I think I that think... ruins Owen because, again, Owen would go on to pass away in May of uh, 99. Yeah. yeah. yeah year, uh, year. So but... I think if Owen was allowed to leave, I don't think that would have happened. No. Yeah. We no, could, we, we could, we I could, hear... that I personally right. suspect that he would have quit the business altogether if he were able to. Because he was talking about being a firefighter. He didn't want to be in wrestling much longer. Yeah, but there were yeah. threats that Vince had made, I believe, to keep Owen for some reason. He gave up the British Bulldog, Brett, and also Jim Nyhart, who would uh, later go on to have a feud oh, yeah, with Kurt Hennig. And, and we are going to do that uncensored uh, watch-along to Uncensored uh, 1998 mm-hmm. with uh, Brett and Kurt. Yeah, and of course, he... Rick Rude was at ringside. So... Um, <sighs> Wow. In the Hold grand on. scheme of oh, things. Owen, Owen. Go ahead. Uh, well, Sean McKenzie writes, Owen would have would have been goddamn miserable at WCW. I mean, know what we know now about WCW yeah. and what they did to Bret Hart, too. He would have been. They, they, everyone would. Eventually, it became the point where, 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 where was that WCW people didn't even respect it. But after, it would have saved his years. life. It yeah. would have saved Owen's life. Ugh, that's Owen would still be way. alive today if... He had gone to WCW. That's yeah, he would have been miserable, way. but he would still be alive today. I do believe that. Yeah, he would have mm. been because yeah. I don't know. I don't know if mm. he would have. There's no way they would have had him go on top of the building. That was Sting's gimmick. So mm-hmm. he wouldn't. They wouldn't have ripped off Sting's gimmick with Owen. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, they didn't. You know. So yeah, the, this whole thing, this whole Montreal screw job situation was totally avoidable. That's. That's the number one thing I learned from re- re-watching all this stuff. Mm-hmm. If Vince would have just said, okay, you got to drop the belt to Taker, and then after that is like, I got to I gotta let you, I got to violate your contract. I literally cannot afford this contract, even though I don't know right. if I believe that, but that was his reasoning. So he wouldn't, he wouldn't, he'd just gotten out of that then, and Brett would have gone. He would have came back in two or three years. I guarantee he would have because yeah. by that point they had more. Vince went public and had a lot more money, so he would have came back then, and he would have worked with the Steve Austins and the Rocks and Kurt Angle and all those guys. You know that, you know. And, been, and, and 
According to Brett's book, when that all happened, Stone Cold kept him in the loop. So Steve Williams and Brett were also friends. Yeah. I don't know how close they were. They, I guess they were pretty close because, I mean, they had that great match at yeah, WrestleMania they... 13. Um, and I wasn't it uh, Brett that inducted Austin or Austin? No, Austin inducted Brett into the Hall of Fame. But that's because they were, you know, they had got, gotten close. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, Brett just has nothing but good things to say about S Steve Williams. Um, he basically, you know, kept him in the loop of what was going mm -hmm. on. And then the whole Stone Cold versus mm -hmm. uh, Vince McMahon happened. And, I mean, it was like, you know, he was saying, well, I'm going to do this to Vince. I'm going to do that to Vince. I've read Stone Cold's book. Um, do you guys remember when he, he got him in the hospital and he was, he hit him in the head with a bedpan? Yeah. The famous bedpan. <laughs> <thing. Yeah. laughs> oh my God. I laugh uh -huh. so hard, especially when he I'll take it over here, nurse. I'll take it over here, nurse. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take it from here, nurse. Oh and my then God. goes like this. <laughs> Um, um, but you remember what what happened after he hit him in the head, <laughs> or the next thing that happened it, in the head? It, uh, Jim Roscoe's bedpan McMahon, my favorite line uh -huh. right there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he, Austin said in his book that he was testing on his own head to see where the sweet spot was so he wouldn't hurt fans. Mm. So again, but mm. I mean, if we go back yeah. to what we're talking about, uh, you know, Stone Cold and Brett were very very close, and um, I didn't know this till much later. Uh, Brett actually, uh, uh, excuse me, Steve actually let Brett blade him. Now, the reason Yo. why you had to really trust your wrestler when doing this, you had to trust that other wrestler, is because literally they would, uh, like the, yeah. uh, a doll of the butcher, he would rip your mm -hmm. the bone. Yeah, it was yeah, like it literally they would cut New you Jack did that. New Jack yeah. did that to some kid. Oh, yeah, jeez. Yeah. Well, 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 hold on. Before we start talking about New Jack, remember. Remember when that kid was saying, "Hey, you do I want you to cut me?" I mean, New Jack. Yeah, we heard he those words. Like, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the uh, mass transit no, thing. No, no, yeah, no, that kid is named yeah. mass transit. And like, I'll cut the shit out of you. Oh yeah, I'll definitely do it. And then he's like, yeah. in the scalpel, he's like, oh shit. <laughs> well, yeah. and he lied about his age too. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that was his fault. Yeah, Vince <laughs> Vince did try to restructure Brett Neal, but Brett was like, "No, I want my money now. Why would I agree to do that?" Right. I don't think and he. I don't think he bought the fact that Vince didn't have money. Because right. uh, Sean Sean McKenzie said up here somewhere, where was it? Uh, he was um, he was brainwashed by Sean and Paul, Paul aka Triple H. But <laughs> mm -hmm. he, Vince was Vince was obsessed with Sean Michaels, like but, yeah, like, it was like I, his I don't boy get toy. It. Almost. I don't I don't no get offense, it. Like, me, but I mean it, it's kind of <laughs> hey. weird what kind of happened between and, and there was a lot of people like um, for example. When I was watching the the Shawn Michaels thing and he was talking, oh, Brett's just running me down and running me down. I'm like, uh, Shawn, you, according to Brett, you said that he could go out there and call you fucking gay because that's what they did in 93 yeah. and 94. The they made that the happen all the time. Shawn yeah. is gay. Shawn <laughs> is gay. I'm like, uh. <laughs> Especially during did... his feud with Mr. Perfect in 93. Uh, everybody knows. Well, uh, we know. <laughs> That there was mm -hmm. a Mr. Perfect Shawn Michaels feud, and on Raw you could hear these guys screaming, "Shawn is gay!" I'm like, uh, and then he was in the Playgirl he magazine too. Yeah. But he was in the Playgirl magazine too. He was, like, yeah, he and, did the Playgirl. And thing, he you know? always, like, Brett yeah. always asks, "Is it okay if I go out and talk about this?" Not and Shawn this, Michaels said, "Yeah." So Shawn acts like, "Oh, he's running me down. He's running me down for no reason." Shawn, you okayed it. You okayed it for him to do that. You can't go out there and, and just say, oh, well, he was talking shit about me, so I talk shit about him. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it, quit being yeah, a bitch. What it, what it is is what it is is probably Bret Hart maybe had a little bit of dimension, and he did like what Joe Biden would say. He's like, hey, guys, I'm going to go to bed. I wish you all guys, but I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get Vince's obsession with Shawn Michaels. Even when he hired um, Bill Watts. No, Shawn wasn't gay, but still. When he hired no. Bill Watts to be his booker, he's like, he wanted to put the belts on Brett. And Vince was like, oh, no, no, we got to put it on Sean, pal. And it's like, okay, well, there's only can be one king in Titan Sports. So I'm just going to mm -hmm. go now, right? Because he couldn't book for him because he kept changing his finishes and stuff. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, they wanted to go with Brett, but it was Cowboy Sean. wanted to go with Brett. Cowboy mm -hmm. Bill Watts yep. won. But it was Sean that uh, obviously got it. 
Yeah. He blocked you on Twitter. Sean Michaels blocked you, Sean? Well, I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. I, 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 we know, I, I, we know Sean Michaels wasn't gay. Okay, in real life. We know no. that. But that but again, Brett said it during the Hitman Wrestling with Shadows that he had okayed it. And Sean was telling him, hey, go out there and say that I'm gay, that I'm homosexual. Ah, uh, wait a that's minute. What, like, come on, what, Sean. That's what Brett said, okay? Yeah. Well, I, th- I think because Brett, Brett... More than I trust Sean Michaels. Yeah, because Brett was doing the um the, 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 the that um, Calgary thing. He was doing, like, this thing to build up the um the rivalry or whatever. He yeah, was just he was saying, a this, baby yeah. face in Canada and heel here in the States. And <laughs> right. So, so right. he was writing, like, all this. I also want to point out, I, I was watching a, a documentary. They did a good job on it. I'm not going to say whoever did it. But they were mentioning how... Um, so, so Brett and Sean was not your typical kind of looking wrestlers because of what happened with the steroids era. Um, mm-hmm. I, somebody was yeah. pointing out that that like 40 or 50 other wrestlers that was supposed to be in what you rumble now in 94. Mm-hmm. Like, I think only four, I think it was Owen, Sean, Brett, and, and, and um, Undertaker. Mm-hmm. So, We're I'm still, just saying, yeah. right, 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 right. So, it's one of those things that people I, like for me, Brett and, and Sean is the best. Mm-hmm. And I think the steroid was probably like one of the best things that happened in wrestling, even though it, it was hurting the business. But you take these big ass dudes that just don't they don't wrestle. And, and you like got I, Sean. And right. Brett. And like I yeah. said, with the and, and, <laughs> and again, uh, to, you know, talk, uh, um, I want two points. So, yes, we already know that, you know, Shawn Michaels was not gay. We know that. But that's what Sean was telling Brett. Uh, yeah. And it could have stemmed from that 93. If you guys go back and watch 93 episodes of Raw, especially with the Shawn Michaels and, and Mr. Perfect feud, you uh, literally can hear the fans chanting, Shawn is gay. Shawn is gay. Nice. So nowhere, no, I don't know where that came from or where people <laughs> picked that up from, but they're mm-hmm. just chanting it. So he could have been saying, well, oh, at- let's play off of that. You know, let's, because I mean, he was a heel. Well, he was at- very uh, hated. Well, look at the way he was at he, way he was dressed and the way he came right, to the ring in '93. Right. He had With the, the long fucking earrings mm-hmm. and the long right. hair, the and, earrings and the long hair, and it's so, like, yeah, yeah. that's and that's he would kiss came Triple from. H, I think, sometimes on the lips, wouldn't he? Would he kiss uh, Triple H sometimes on the lips? Possibly, I don't remember him. Ever. Yo, really? Oh, yeah, I think he was. Ki- he would just like go like that to Triple H. He just lean over when they yeah, were sitting up. They were sitting well, up on the raw uh, entrance way, and I think he just leans over and kisses uh, Triple H. You know, with all defense to uh, Sean, you know, a little bit of that whatever white powder magic was, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. God, hey, God, okay. God right. like that magic. I mean, right. Magic hey, comes in all forms. I mean, I would have been kissing everybody. Yeah, I, I, hey, kid. Hey, kid. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. it, it reminded me of the John Moxley what? thing. What John Moxley does, he kisses men, but he's married to a yeah. woman. So, I mean, right. I'm and, just and saying. At least, yeah, at least just... Sean was high. At least Sean was high. <laughs> 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 you mean he was awesome. But... <laughs> yeah. I like the wrestling fans at that point in time did not like pretty boy wrestlers. And that's true. I hated Shawn Michaels. In those yeah, days. I hated I mean, Shawn like, Michaels right. too. It's like pretty boy. I was boy. more for Mr. Perfect and Bret Hart. Yeah, it's like now pretty boy wrestlers are beloved in the business. Right. Look at AEW, all those guys. I mean, I don't want to get into it this week, but let's see. Back with <laughs> it says, Shawn Michaels is gay as Kyle Kalinske. Okay. That's good. <laughs> It's a family let me, let me, fucking let me, friendly show. show. Right. It's let a friendly DM. fucking show. Wait, where's Crystal Ball at? I, let me DM her. Uh, Confirm that. Oh, shit. She's probably a man. Yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> Yo, Jay. I was <laughs> never a fan. Especially, like, and we must remember in the mid in the nineties, throughout the nineties, Americans are pretty anti gay. So all the polling yeah, voted. And, and that's which is why, why like we, in ninety six they brought in the uh, and again, this stems from Jim talking about a first gay encounter uh that Vince had. Now I, no one knows what happened, just that mm. uh Vince said he was broken down and he got a ride from a hitchhiker who was touching him. And it was a guy. Yeah, so, uh, and that's story. where Gold Dust came out. Yeah, that's where that's the Gold what he, Dust character came out. Right. He told the story to Dustin. I think Scott Hall might have been there. Mr. Perfect, too. I yeah, because correctly. Mr. Perfect. And, and the only one who didn't like that Gold Dust thing was Scott Hall. 
because if you remember mm-hmm. on Raw, uh, he, uh, Mr. Perfect, who was commentating at the time, of course, Kurt, mm-hmm. always looking sexy in his stuff. But mm-hmm. I'm a woman, so I can say that. Anyway, he comes out. <laughs> uh, Scott Hall comes into the ring and he gives him flowers and a, and a teddy bear. And he's just like, ah, you know, but like, like I said, the only person who didn't like that gold dust uh, theme was to push that gay button too. Um, was literally Scott Hall, but but that's Vince, how they started with it, you know. Yeah, Vince was it, Dustin. Dustin didn't really under. I don't think he hated it. He more didn't, un, didn't understand. He didn't understand because under, he kept. He wouldn't Vince, say. Vince wouldn't say the word gay. He would. He say said androgynous. Androgynous. Yeah. About five, yeah. five, five. It's like what the hell does that word mean? Yeah, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> and in my understanding, when he did, when he fought Savio Vega, he started doing that, you know, sexy thing that he was like, uh-huh, hey, he would going. touch. Them. Damn, Salvo Vega, Puerto Rican guy. <laughs> yeah. Does, <laughs> does everyone remember uh, the Stone Cold uh, and Mr. Perfect uh, thing at ringside when Stone no. Cold was? Oh, I'll have to show that sometime. Uh, Stone Cold and Mr. Perfect had it out one time. Uh, it was when it was before Austin had the Intercontinental Belt. He had the Million Dollar Belt. Yes. When mm-hmm. with Ted DiBiase when he was the ringmaster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. it was right after that, I think, but he was against Savio Vega and he was at ringside commentating, and so was Mr. Perfect. And there was fireworks going there, and it was really mm-hmm. good. I wish that um and I I'm sure Kurt wishes he would have stayed with WWF Stone at Cold. that time. He didn't have the curly blonde hair then. He had no. like a, he was bald. No, no yeah, that was in like WCW. Cold, that was like yeah, in ninety four, like, ninety five. Yeah. Yeah. When he was with the stunning blondes, uh, by ninety six, yeah, by the Hollywood he blonde. had he had the uh, balding. He was the balding look, <laughs> right. right? He was the Hollywood blondes <laughs> in WCW with uh, Brian Pillman. So yeah. that's where the blonde hair came into it. Yeah, that was uh, a, that tag team was great. But go ahead, yeah. yeah, yeah no, no, so, 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 we going back to the Montreal school job. I'm just saying. Yes, mm-hmm. we're getting so, off topic as we usually do. Uh, yeah, 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 you know, I, I love it. Yeah, show, so. bear with it. Yes. Know? Because we got to, we still got to talk about my boy Shawn Michaels here. Ah, oh, you know come on, I mean? come on. <laughs> okay, yeah, go. No, but but my thing is this: so, <laughs> so he he was the champion until what? You are talking about ninety eight WrestleMania? Uh, yeah, he won yeah. it. Well, wait, he won wait, it in ninety against Brett, and yeah. then he dropped hey, it. The, to Austin at WrestleMania, and not, yeah, right, right, with the Mike Mike Tyson thing going. Right, on. Well, he dropped right. it yeah. a few times, you know. So it wasn't like he was champion all the way through. He dropped it a few times here and there. Okay, there was that one time. I think the next year's WrestleMania was supposed to be a rematch between Sean and Brett, and Sean put over Brett for the title, and Sean didn't want to do it, mm. and didn't want to do it, didn't want to do it, and then he faked a knee injury. Remember the whole "I lost my smile" speech. Yeah, right. I lost my smile. That was, that was cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And take, he had a career-ending knee injury and he lost his smile. And take was like, <laughs> if if he doesn't, sh- if he comes in here, I man, I'm gonna beat smile. his ass. Right. Yeah, like, but yeah. and that's because you know Sean was doing a downward spiral. And th- this is what Jim Cornette talks about on, you know, his show is and, and on the omnibus was basically we had to live through the whole fucking, uh, okay, Brett, you want to drop it at WrestleMania to Sean and then let him do that die real down world spiral spiral. I can't uh-huh. talk today. Blah, 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 blah. Um, on, we all get that. <laughs> yeah. So, and he said, you just go off and do your stuff. You do your lonesome dove stuff and you watch Shawn Michaels will literally, uh, yeah, spiral Brett's out of ridiculous. control, and that's exactly what happened. So when he came back, mm-hmm. it was like, I, uh, I don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah he so, didn't want to put over Brett, and Brett knew. I think he's telling people backstage, watch Sean. Right, Michaels and, and that with interview champion. with Sean, I watched. He never yeah. even brought up the fact that he, wa- uh, according to Brett Hart. Now I'm getting this off from Brett Hart. Uh, he walked into Brett's Six office, weeks. or he 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 walked into the locker room, and uh, you know sh- he. Brett said to Sean, I'm going to put you over. Don't worry. I'm not going to hurt you. And shook his hand. Mm. And Sean said, well, that's good because I wouldn't do it for you. Mm. Uh, like a petulant little totally, child. <laughs> yeah. He never even said that in the interview I watched. And I was just like, yeah, I can't watch tra- this no more. I turned it off. But, yeah. I mean, yeah. And then the whole hair thing where Brett pulls his hair out, you know. Brett and ripped shoves his ass it, back uh, Sean shoves it down on the table. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, like, God, it hurts. Even thinking about it. Mm. I don't, I, I, I can't get it, wrap it around my head. Vince's obsession with Sean again. It's like, yeah, he's a pretty, he's, he does great moves and he does, he's a hundred times better wrestlers than the guys today. But I, I, I didn't, I just didn't get it. 
I mean, I still say Sean. uh, I still say Vince had a thing for blondes, and I guess Shawn Michaels was his type. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, again, uh, Vince said he had a gay encounter, but he never said if it was, you know, repulsed. That's messed up. That's messed up. Ah, (laughs) yeah, but but yeah, but but I think Bret Hart. (laughs) Red Hart speculated, I think, in his book that Sean and Vince may have had something because Sean would lo- lo- always hang out at Vince's locker for hours. So yeah, because probably no, Sean was called politics. politics. Yeah, yeah, Sha- Sean was a kiss ass. That's all. Yeah, he was a kiss ass. Yeah, yeah. He was a kiss ass. Because he he said about the whole click thing was in full swing, but then again, who got the brunt of that after Scott Hall and Kevin Nash left? It was Triple, Triple H. H. Triple H. Triple H. H. Mm-hmm. Downfall yeah. for it. It wasn't mm-hmm. Shawn Michaels. Because he was the no. champ, no. right? And Vin, I, I can't punish Sean. He's the champ, pal. So I was like, oh, mm-hmm. well, Hunter, I'm sorry, you gotta take the heat. Yeah, you gotta take the heat. And you now gotta look beat, at Hunter, right? You gotta get, you had to get beat down by the Godwins in a Hell Hog Pen match, and you gotta oh, get. God, I hate remember that. Oh my yeah. goodness! Yeah, and yeah. I was, I like the Godwins. I like them, but he got, he got Hunter Yeehaw. got beat by the Godwins in Hog Pen matches, like for weeks. Yeah. I was like. <laughs> He had to go in that shit yeah, and that slob, stuff. Yeah, and that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my mm-hmm. god! He's like, well, you got to get beat by them, pals. Like, okay. yeah, mm-hmm. by these because shitty he... ass wrestling yeah. things. Yeah, shoot, man. <clears throat> if, if, if 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 you ever think you're you're at the bottom, just imagine being Triple H dealing with the fallout with the click. <laughs> yeah, ninety seven. Well, and you know Twitter what's funny like... is he never blamed Vince for that. Even though Vince blamed him, he <sighs> never blamed Vince for that. But he got the last laugh because look who's in charge now. Right, now that yeah. Vince is no mm-hmm. longer around. Hmm. Yeah, you see, uh, I, you see, Paul Levesque understood the business, not like Hulk Hogan. No, Paul <laughs> did understand the business. Sometimes you have to eat the shit. Sometimes you have to be yeah. at the bottom. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah, and and Vince says it. His favorite saying: "Got to eat the shit sandwich sometimes, pal." Right. Yeah. Five foot long. That, yeah. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. sure. it was supposed to be Triple H who was supposed to win the King of the Ring '96, and. Austin won instead, but I honestly think if that hadn't have happened, would we have Stone Cold today? Would there be a no. Stone Cold Steve Austin oh. if he had not won the King of the Ring instead of Triple H? That's an interesting debate because he won in '96 mm-hmm. without that Austin 316 says I I just whipped your whipped ass. Your ass. I don't know. And the next night there were signs Austin 316 signs, and it was like, oh, that's it. Steve's our guy, basically, and everybody backstage realized that. And He's that's when the over. whole Austin McMahon thing came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, uh, you know, uh, Jake, this thing was the perfect foil, you know, with you, you, you're dumping your Bible. Bible and saying your prayers. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, he, <laughs> yeah. I can just watch Jake do his promo about yeah. dumping right. his Bible and the Psalms and stuff. No, actually, Austin 316 says, I just I whooped just your ass. ass. That's right. Yeah, wow. I think Woo. I, to, the, the way that went down, I think Steve Austin might have. Uh, cut his lip or cut his tongue. Uh, yeah, he went yeah. to the hospital and get stitches. He yeah. came back at the end of the show and he asked one of the agents, "Oh, what did Jake? What was Jake promo about?" And he called him the promo, and that's when okay, he went to the ring, and that's when he cut the promo after he won. Oh, <laughs> so he, he yeah. didn't see it. He did, some agent told him what it was. What was his promo again? And he learned that from him. where ECW. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what? By the way. Yes, ECW same uh, place. promos. Hey, right. but, yeah, because because uh, well, I never forget. I'll, Thank I'll, you. I'll, 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 I'll never forget Stone Cold's promo of, "Hey, I'm Barrick Bischoff. This is where big boys play <laughs> right. with each other. That's right. I'm <laughs> ECW stuff. Yeah, right. That's right. Let's go. We probably yo, we probably guys over here. You know what I mean? Because you know. WCW at the time had the their, their slogan was "Where the big boys play." I'm like, right. that's kind of gay, but okay. Play with each other. <laughs> well, that's where Scott. They're not here to play. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do Sean agree. Sean, says, yeah, I says, do yes, agree. He would have gotten over. I do agree to to a point because it was, and you guys are going to laugh, but but Steve talks about him with such affection because. Uh, again, I mean, you guys heard when it was Kurt's birthday special, it was Kurt who introduced Stone Cold to, uh, um, what's his name? (laughs) Kevin, Kevin Dunn. Um, so, you know, and and he, Austin says he didn't have to do that. I was competition. I was going to take over his job, but Kurt was a great guy. So, you know, he did that for Stone Cold. So, so I do agree sort of with that, you know, um, (laughs) You know, that Austin was starting to get a foothold in the business because mm-hmm. Kurt kind of nudged him in that way. 
Um, so, you know, thanks to Kurt Hennig, mm. you know, we might not have had Stone Cold Steve Austin. I do agree. That. Triple H is mm. a good booker. I mean, awesome. I mean, no mm. one's perfect. I mean, I've had some issues with his booking, but I'm not going to get to that this week. Because Nobody's this perfect except for Mr. The... Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. and, and I and I said perfect on purpose because I knew I wanted. Ah, Steph to bring that on. Hey, yeah. hey, watch All it! Right, but, I but come yeah, over I mean, there. Yeah, but yeah, he's a good. He's solid. You know, I like WWE. <laughs> I must say WWF, WWE so far. In WWE. Well, because we've been WWF. saying WWF for all yeah, this time. But, because back in the yeah. day, it was WWF. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but Triple H, you know, he deserves his kudos. WWE is fantastic today. But we'll get back to we'll get to that next week. You want to watch next week? We'll talk a lot more modern wrestling. But this yeah. week, let's get back to Montreal. I mean, we 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 missed a ton, I'm sure. So we're let's, yeah. <laughs> Because I can do, we can talk about this for four or five hours, you know. Mm. Well, I mean, there's 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 so much we can address, but like when we look at the build up to this event, I mean, this this was the battle, in, at least in Vince's mind, to save his belt and his pride. This does because at the end of the day, you know, Vince McMahon being a businessman, I just want everyone to be clear, uh, just be clear on this statement. The only reason why he did what he did wasn't to save the brand; it was to save his ego and pride. To save mm-hmm. the belt, definitely. And, and mm-hmm. the thing is, like when when I say I I can understand where Vince was coming <laughs> from, knowing Vince's character, he's probably assuming that everyone else is like that. Now, th- be, yeah. to be fair, in in this day and age, you know, uh, privately, and I think maybe as much as we can, you know, in in this world, everyone's kind of out of for, out for themselves. You know, you, you know, want to kind of back thing. away, maybe a little bit. What's up? Oh, sorry, Angel's mic is popping. Okay, sorry, um, sorry about that. Maybe just let, take let me, a little bit away let, from it. Yeah, let, let me just, let, let, let me just finish my let me just finish my thought ahead, here. Yeah. So you know when, when you have people who you know, especially Vince, who really th- views people that they are all out for themselves, and in many ways, you know, we we, we you know the average person kind of sort of is, but Vince is 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 a person who's incapable of seeing people being genuine or sincere. And right, I, I, I will go into the camp of saying that Brett would never have done it, but Vince in his mindset is thinking, you know what, he'll probably do it, or he's it at Eric Bischoff. <laughs> if it's not me, Brett, if Eric Bischoff gets his hands on that belt, which I don't think Brett Howard would have even brought the belt to WCW at all. Um, you know, he just he just couldn't risk it and he just felt like, okay, well, let me just get some white heat on me. And it's and it's not acceptable because l- look what happened to Brett's career afterwards in, in WCW. I mean it it went nowhere. <laughs> Which WCW. I think I believe that that's what Vince was telling uh, Brett. That's yeah. What yeah. And then yeah it, it that was uh either. yeah um they would uh I think Vince um Brett might have said that in Hitman Wrestling with Shadows is they don't uh, WCW won't know what to do with a Bret Hart. And yeah, I agree with that. Again, you know, no one knows what's, what is going on or what went on in Vince McMahon's head. I'm sure he sat down with himself if, you know, if he wasn't with Linda or, you know, his cronies or whatever. He probably mm-hmm. sat down or, you know, he, he was laying in bed that night and was like, all right, well, let's just think of every scenario and think of how to get out of it. Because, I mean, again, uh, Brett was saying, no, that's not good for me. Sean's saying, that's not good for me. So, I mean, I, I kind of see where you're coming from, Kit, because it kind of felt mm-hmm. like Vince was between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, I no, I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah, I definitely mm-hmm. get that. And that's when he probably thought, okay, well, why don't we go with Jim's scenario of double crossing? Because, again, it's as old as wrestling and as old as time is the double cross. So yep. in that in that sense, I could see where he was probably looking up at the ceiling, kind of going, "Well, what do I do? Nothing's good enough for Brett. Nothing's good enough for Sean. So, and we've already booked the match to be Brett versus Sean at Survivor Series. So mm-hmm. we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. So I kind of see where you're coming from. It's just unfortunately we only have we don't have what was in vince's head because vince won't ever talk about it but we only have yeah. what you know jim Cornette, jim or jim russo fuck fuck russo okay <laughs> we have <laughs> we have what sean said what triple h said what bruce mm-hmm. said what shit stain said and then of course what jim Cornette said <laughs> yeah i mean that's that was just um hey kid oh okay let's your mother was a Kai and Tai fan. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> you don't know who Kai and Tai was? I remember. 
Okay. Yeah, and it was a special <laughs> restaurant table made of Japanese wrestlers. Well, first of all, bad cookies, let me tell you something. <laughs> to my FBI handlers, Bill and Bob. <laughs> it was bad cookies. Oh <laughs> it was bad cookies. He's he's the one who's got that cocaine stash. <laughs> nah. It was Trey. Well, <laughs> he's working in association with Trey. Yeah. Is that what you want to play? <laughs> Did everybody see that uh uh Kai and Ty um angle with uh Val Venus? You guys remember that? Right, yeah. Where he tried he to cut, cut off, off his yeah. little yeah, member? Yeah. The sausage. Yeah. Yo. Dude, I had nightmares about that shit. No, I actually he... thought it was real. Uh... <laughs> I'm like, why? I was like, why? Why are you doing that? Never. Uh, he was messing raw, with the Japanese like... girl, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. wife or something. Yeah, his waifu. Waifu. <laughs> <laughs> of course, um, that had to be a Vince Russo thing. I mean, come I on. I know, man. yeah, it definitely was a Vince Russo I was Russo looking thing. at that like, wait, why? What is this? I mean, <laughs> I, we all know that his penis wasn't actually cut off, so why don't No, no. Even... <laughs> and then he comes uh, out, so... he's had guy like ice on it and stuff, and then he takes the yeah. ice off and starts laughing and goes, My little member. He he kind of he 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 ducked in what he needed to. I'm just like, Oh, I didn't need that information. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I'm not only Hello, like Val Venus. Ladies. Oh, I hated yeah. Val Venus. But that Say was that. a that was a um uh sort of like a uh what Rick Rude was, you know, right. the <clears throat> yeah instead of doing this, he just went like this with the towel. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows if Sean could twiddle his hips? That was his real name, Sean, but I can't remember his last name. But yeah, I didn't really like Val Venus. I just remember that Kai and Ty part of it i'm just like i had nightmares i mean i was only what 12 almost 13 when that happened <laughs> watching it at my grandmother's going what <laughs> even well, that, yeah, I think, yeah. that guy down there is he all right <laughs> that hurt me i'm not I, I even think, a man i don't I think even after have that, parts i think after that people started watching anime i'm like this is what happens in that's, anime yeah that's true sean i'm just saying it, it the the gimmick reminded me of Rick Rude's gimmick. Yeah, it was. I, yeah. There's no doubt Rick was, was a, a better off. wrestler. No doubt about that. Yeah, I love time. Rick Rude. I love his wrestling. Um, and, and there's a, a a fan of mine who is on X, and I were talking about this and arguing about it, um, because I uh, Kurt talks about he wanted to do a few with Rude, but Rude said no, I don't want to do that. Um, <clears throat> uh. I think it would have been great to see, you know, Kurt as a baby face and then Rick Rude as a heel. You know what I'm saying? Or vice versa, yeah, yeah. vice mm -hmm. versa. Um, whichever one wanted to be heel, but that never got to happen. But if you watch uh, Survivor Series 89, which will be coming out in May, um, we do a watch along with it. Rick pulls the rope down and uh, yeah. Kurt tumbles out of the ring and you see them get up and have words. So it's like it almost could have happened where they had that kind of a feud. So Owen was no stranger at WCW. He'd been there prior to going to WWF. Was he was he doing jobs there, I'm assuming? Because it, he probably I was, don't remember yeah. him. I don't remember him actually being on television, you know. If he might I might have been on some I, dark I, matches. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I so yeah, I forgot. Thank you for that burn virtue. Uh, please like and subscribe. But yeah, I mean, I was reading, <laughs> I I was looking at my notes and it said and according to Jim Cornette on his omnibus, he was talking about how Shawn Michaels was in the production meeting the night before Survivor Series. Right. But yeah, Vince and, went to his hotel room who and got Triple H to come in there, and that's when they talked about the, okay, we're going to yeah. screw Brett. You win? I didn't know that until I was, re I was hearing that. Like, Isn't that weird that Shawn Michaels was in the production meeting the night before instead of do doing a live event in, what, Detroit, wherever they were the night before? He didn't work that night at the house show. He was there in Montreal. I'm like, what is he doing there? <laughs> Speaking so of... Nobody, you... Go ahead. Nobody nobody thought that was weird that Shawn Michaels being one of the top guys wasn't working the house show the night before. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he was doing Yeah, it home. was. Yeah, that, that was... nobody yeah. thought that was oh, weird. Oh, 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 that well, was well, you well, and I people, debating. Well, people, <laughs> people, <laughs> well, well people, people probably didn't think it was weird, but they were probably thinking it was like, okay. <laughs> I didn't know your last Sean, name, John. Sean. Sean, Sean, Sean were, was, was probably there just to maybe run over them. They're like, maybe that's why nobody brought it up until like now, like how we all see it as being weird. Well, I yeah, mean, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I just know that he wasn't at the meeting, but Vince, uh, um, I think maybe Jared Briscoe might have been in that 
uh, hotel room with Sean and Triple H when he yeah. told Sean. That was in the uh, Dark Shadows. No, it was in the Dark Side of the, the Ring. Dark Side of the Ring. It was yeah. also in Hitman Wrestling with Shadows where Sean, or no, it was an interview I saw. Sean says, yes, I was, I was, I knew. He knew what was going <laughs> to happen. It's because Vince came to his hotel room. He said uh, Triple H was there, and I believe Jerry Briscoe was also there. Jerry Briscoe was there to teach Shawn Michaels how to defend himself, right. teach him. So it was like the night before case, that they actually came and told Sean what was going yeah, down. Just in case, you know, that Brett did try to beat the fuck out of him, which that little training he had a few hours before the night before wouldn't have worked anyways. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. wait, wait, what are you going to do, turn him into Luthez or something? That wasn't going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't know how to get in it, yeah. Yeah, do we do um, we have stories of uh like the wrestlers that was in WCW, yeah. like what they thought about? Um, uh, mm-hmm. Hall and Nash talked about the screw job. Hall thinks it was a work, which I don't agree, but unless he might have been trolling, you know, get attention, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't, and it wasn't a work because I mean, again, what how would how would Scott Hall know he was over in WCW? Now, of course, WCW wrestlers who knew Shawn Michaels, knew Bret Hart, they all knew mm-hmm. that stuff. Like I said, I, from Kurt's end of it, he he stuck up for Bret. And, of course, Rick Rude did, too, because that's why Rick was, you know, Left. He, he kind of also exposed the business of being on both shows. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was live and what was taped. But, yeah. I mean, um, it's... I'm not really sure how to answer that one, but I mean, like I said, Scott Hall would have had to, uh, he would have had to know what was going down and I'm sure he didn't hear it from Brett. Maybe Sean told him, I don't know. Cause you never know what Sean or what everybody else talks about or mm-hmm. what was said is, to uh, Scott Hall. Which is weird because you figured that he would ask his buddy, Shawn Michaels, hey, was this a work? Was this real? I mean, mm-hmm. he, he said he never asked him once. It's like, oh, that's a lie. I mean, I guarantee you they talked about it. <laughs> yeah, they were yeah. all click members. They were all best friend click members. You know, Right. So- and Scott Hall, I don't know how close he was or not close he was with Bret Hart. But I can tell you that Bret definitely talked about it to Kurt and Rude and Jim and Bulldog. And I can't do the accent, but Bulldog, as soon as it happened, Bulldog went... Oh, they fucked him. They fucked them. Fucked Brett. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't they do the accent. Brett. I'm sorry. Yeah, because what <laughs> happened yeah. was he was supposed Bulldog and Owen were supposed to come out and do a run in to cause a disqualification. Right. right. That was supposed to be the throw. finish. And then uh, Brett was just supposed to give up the belt. Right. The next night yeah, on Raw. And the next yeah. night, yeah, which I didn't I, w- I wouldn't like that idea either if I'm booking, but it's like I would have had but uh, let's not get into that. But yeah, I mean Owen. But and again, Brett, Vince mm-hmm. should Vince and he he should have taken responsibility for this. Again, when you were nagged on on Brett's contract, you should have said, "Okay, Brett. Well, then you're gonna have to lose the belt because I need to get it off you if you're gonna go to WCW." Before he opened up, before he allowed him to negotiate WCW, he's like, "Okay, fine. I get the belt off you." The next night on Raw, whenever the next TV is, you got to get the belt off you. Yeah. Instead, he's like, he let, he opened it up to negotiate WCW. He got two and a half million a year, which is insane money. Which, <laughs> Even today, yeah, it's like I said, like record. a drunken sailor, uh, um, Eric Bischoff was giving out all this money like a drunken sailor. Like I said, and, and mm-hmm. you had said, Angel, very eloquently that um, Brett had called Eric Bischoff, and Bischoff said, "Just do the job, Brett." Yeah, we were talking mm-hmm. about it a few weeks mm-hmm. ago. Yeah, yeah, when we touched on this. <clears throat> well, and Jim Cornette had mentioned the fact that. Uh, well, uh, him and Brian Lass, um, that technically Brett was supposed to stay around WWF until December of 97. Yeah, that was the original plan. That mm. was the original plan because he was uh, gonna, Brett had he was gonna drop the. Yeah, he's going to drop the WWF title on a four-way. Right, to, right. You know, to mm-hmm. Sean. But Taker would beat Sean or Sean would beat Taker, wherever. Brett wouldn't do a job leaving WWF, which... Again, I don't think Vince was in love with, but it's like, hey, we do what we got to do, you know. Brett. Right, you got to do what you got because you yeah. already signed a contract giving yeah. Bret Hart creative hold control. On. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Sean McKenzie's writing it was Ted Turner's money, not WCW's money. Well, technically, Ted Turner, they had a budget. Yes, Let's, Eric yes, Bischoff they says they had a budget. <laughs> yeah, if you yeah, listen it, to his eighty-three <laughs> weeks about this, yeah, and he, he does talk about, about the Montreal the screw job. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he talks about that and he says, you know, technically, yeah, it wasn't, 
what, <coughs> excuse me, it was Ted Turner's money, but they had a budget. But I mean, even that budget, even Kirk got almost a million dollars in his contract when he went to WCW. And it was uh, in WWF, he was only making uh, half a million. Where, yeah. What are you going to do uh, when Vince McMahon, or I'm sorry, when Eric Bischoff offers you almost a million dollars in your contract and you're only making half a million? And, and, and guarantee. Which, which way are you going to go? Uh, you know what guaranteed I mean? money. Well, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. when, when it was guaranteed money, I mean, WCW was the place to go for all the guys. They wanted that money. Right. They wanted the check. And Ted mm, Turner was right. on. And Ted Turner did have the key. And here's the thing. Eric Bischoff knew how to talk to Ted Turner. And I'm yeah. uh, and not 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 to kind of like you know, speculate, but I'm willing to bet that Ted Turner was thinking somehow, however unlikely it could be, but you 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 debate me on how Ted Turner would not have liked to have had the WWF Heavyweight Championship in his office, if not thrown in the garbage can, that have have that big fu to Vince McMahon, like aha, I got your belt and it's in my office and I drink whiskey in front of it See, every I don't day. Know. Mm-hmm. If you ask Eric Bischoff, he yeah. kind of says, you know, Ted Turner really had nothing to do with it. It was kind of like the bastard. Oh, child. really? Uh, Ted Turner wouldn't. That's it, what Eric yes. Bischoff says. Yeah, yeah. Eric Bischoff, Bischoff says. said, yeah, he said that literally they they didn't really give a fuck about wrestling. They kind of just gave it a budget and said, "Here, you guys deal with it." So, yeah, it wait, 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 wait. But, but, but Ted Turner was was a uh, you know at least uh, uh, from, from what I've been hearing, he 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 was pretty a, a much a big fan about. It. He was one of those people like he would he would throw money and not just give it a budget, but because he loved it. I mean, unless we're yeah. Ted Turner, okay, loved, I, I, I have to hear this. He I loved hear wrestling. Turner, yeah, he he loved. He loved the wrestling, gave him good ratings because if back in the early days of right. Turner Broadcasting, wrestling was always on his network and always gave him good ratings, which is right. He built, right. He built Turner Broadcasting off it of was, wrestling. It was the and, NWA and the, before that, yeah. It was it was wrestling and the Atlanta Braves. He built he right. built Turner Broadcasting off of that. Yeah, so that's he why liked he loved it. wrestling. There's no doubt about that. He liked wrestling. I'm just saying that <laughs> according to Bischoff, they were kind of like the bastard children, but they had a bu- a budget. Yeah, yeah. That they a certain budget that they had set that Ted mm. Turner had set for wrestling, and that could, like I said, it could all be made up. But this is just coming from Eric Bischoff when I actually did listen to 83 Weeks. Um, I I usually yeah, would listen right. to that. So according to Bischoff, yeah, I mean he. <clears throat> wishes he had better lighting. He wishes he had better production. Uh, but when the NWO came around, he did actually have all that stuff. And everyone loved the NWO until it started getting a little stale. And then the Austin McMahon thing took off on the other side. So mm-hmm. that's when the 83 weeks started going down. But but if they did better in the product, Bischoff said they would love to have gotten more money in their budget to you know, spend on the wrestlers, give them, uh, you know, but what I'm saying is they were given lucrative contracts that usually, uh, never really would have happened in WWF. So again, if you get half a million with Vince, but you're, uh, given almost a million with Eric Bischoff, which one are you going to take? You know what I mean? So that's all I meant. Uh, but according to Bischoff, they had a set budget. Take that with what you will. If you believe Bischoff, great. If you don't, that's fine. I think uh, Ted <clears throat> he was a good salesman all- because yeah. in AWA, technically, the only reason why uh, I mean Eric Bischoff worked in the office. This is yeah. what he says on eighty three weeks that um, <clears throat> you know he worked in yeah. the office in AWA and only became an announcer because they they needed someone to announce. This was in the yeah. dying days of AWA. And, and wasn't WWF yeah. was doing a little run in the TBS or TNT or something like that. That was the whole Black Saturday thing. Yeah, which, the Black Saturday thing. Which yeah. we talked about when Ole Anderson passed, you know, like last yeah. month. We, mm-hmm. we brought it up. But, yeah, that was Black Saturday. Basically what happened was um, Gerald Briscoe, the Briscoes and Ole and somebody else ran um, Georgia right. Championship Wrestling. That's and correct, And Ole, Ole was screwing over the other partners. He would, They weren't giving his money. So I think it was Gerald or Gorilla. No, Gorilla Monsoon. Told um the Briscoes and the other person sell the Vince, you know, he'll give you your money. You go, you have a job for life. It's like okay, mm-hmm. and the Briscoes worked there until very recently, I think, in WWF. So <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that was the and, whole and Black that's true, guys. That AOL once AOL bought out Ted Turner, mm-hmm. yes, they yeah, they that, thought that, that wrestling was um, they hated wrestling. They hated <laughs> oh, wrestling. Yeah, everybody and there. They told Bischoff in it, in a meeting, "This is how we want it to go," and. Again, Bischoff says, well, 
that's just what WWF did, and their ratings went down the drain. But now that's what he to was told it? to do, and that's why it went out of yeah. business because he yeah. they weren't making it uh, with they the were... NWO. It wasn't a family friendly show, but that's what AOL told them to do because they want they didn't like wrestling. They, they sabotage. And, 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 and they it sabotaged it on purpose. It, it, yeah. it explains all that goofy stuff that we saw. That's right. All mm-hmm. that, oh, that goofy, goofy. Ninety nine. I mean, I yeah. I actually oh, saw God. that interview. Brett was talking about he did an interview. Uh, or he did a promo or something about his cat. I actually saw that again, and he's right. He does. Oh, I love my cat. You know that was after. And Bischoff goes, I don't remember that. What are you talking about? Because Bischoff is an idiot, and he mm-hmm. is an idiot. I agree with Brett. He's a fucking moron who doesn't know anything about wrestling. He, you know, to be fair, you know, he, he knows more than Tony Khan. I mean, well, yeah, yeah he knows more than Tony Khan. Yes, yeah, and, but. And, and also, and also, in fact, he he knows at least when he had everything working with him at the time. How to really promote a brand and uh, get the hype built up around it? I'll give him that. Bischoff is a um, promoter and a communicator. Yeah. I mean, he does. You know, he has talent, but for wrestling, I, I kind of he has more talent than Tony Khan. But yeah, but I mean, it, in the end, I mean, was it worth it? I don't know. See, it. it I think Bischoff. Brought, said, they brought in Russo, and Russo totally fucked up everything. I mean, he made everything like uh, a Jerry oh, yeah. Springer show. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's and then the pissed thing. in everybody's face he, when he when he made himself a champion, and then he made an actor who could who didn't know how to wrestle, didn't know anything about the wrestling business, but wanted to be a wrestling champion. He made yeah. David Arquette mm-hmm. the champion. That was literally pissing in everybody's face. Don't Bishop forget to the same. Fired. Same, same day. Uh, <laughs> toenails are more talented. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> by, by the way, same, same David Arquette who. Uh, Bravo. Also, uh, you know, when 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 he was having the championship belt around him, but he he was also the same guy who <clears throat> would bully other people around, then then hide behind him. Imagine being the WCW Heavyweight Champion, pushing people around, then running and hiding when you have the belt around your waist. Can, how does that create yeah. enthusiasm? It was just it, it was all bullshit. I just it was um, like, it, I, he <clears throat> swears up and down that the ratings went up while he's in charge in WCW, and it did. Oh, even, yeah. When you would even when, Meltzer when, said no, the ratings went. When down, you smoke though. enough, when you smoke and drink right. enough, then yeah, everything's going up. Yeah, the ratings were going up. <laughs> hey, bro, bro, ratings are going up. Hey, bro, bro ratings are going no, up, bro. My bro. wrestling. Let me tell you, my show has been productive. But it wasn't that David Arquette thing was um ba- uh, based on that movie that they try to do too. Ready to rumble. rumble. Ready, Ready to Brian. rumble, yeah. Wow. Yeah, but that, that doesn't movie. mean you come in. <laughs> even when they had um, No Holds Barred and Hogan and the Zeus thing with Tiny Lister, even yeah, then they didn't make Lister the champion. Okay, no, they didn't. They, they didn't have him come in and tiny... become, and and pin uh, Hulk Hogan and make him the yeah. champion. That would literally be pissing in everybody's face who yeah. had that belt before. Wow! Tiny What's Lister that smell? Well, he it came in very briefly <laughs> right after the movie was shot. And uh, he, I saw that in the movie. He was there, man. but he was in tag teams yeah, with, with the Macho Man, man. and Sherry, of course. Yeah. And, and I want. Mm-hmm. I really want to see Sherry's dark side of the ring, um, because I saw the preview. Um, she, uh-huh. her ex-husband was saying, you know, it's time for her to put her big girl pants on and be a mom as she walks out on her son. I couldn't do that. No. I, I could not do that. I love my son so much. I, I just, I couldn't walk out. But it's it's a thing scary. That, that Sherry, she, Sherry it loved wanted the business a, a lot. She wanted a wrestling career. I get that. Yeah. But I mean, uh-huh. but you mm-hmm. still should talk to your son, be with your son, <clears> do what you got to do to be there for your kids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I love you know, her. So, oh, so cool. wa- walking out, I mean, like, you know, probably. Oh God, like, uh, see, I couldn't do that. I, I would yeah, be calling my son every day from the road, or as much as I could. Yeah, and she did have her demons. We had demons, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. was prescription drugs, which she was heavily into. Um, but she was an amazing talent, and she was an amazing uh, wrestler uh, in Manager. women's wrestling. Mm-hmm. She was a great mm-hmm. manager, yeah. especially with Macho and Elizabeth and that whole yeah. thing. And Shawn Michaels. And Shawn Michaels. Yeah, she was. They stuck her with Shawn Michaels very briefly. <laughs> but, yeah. And she gets she hit saw- with that mirror. You guys remember yeah. when he pulls her in yeah. front of her and you hear Mr. Perfect go, oh, my God, Man. he hit a woman. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, Marty yeah. Jannetty came back. 
Yeah, yeah. but <clears throat> and uh, she sung his original song. <clears throat> the original, yes, she did. Um, yes, I, if you watch, yeah. uh, uh, if you yeah, watch it, um, right before <laughs> Kurt turns, well, at, right after, if you watch that Shawn Michaels match, uh, you hear Sherry's voice. I think uh-huh. he's cute. Yes, he's cute. I okay. know he's sexy, and I'm just like, yeah, it was, it was Sherry. Ah, it's going to be my theme song from now on. <laughs> Deconstructing Topic Podcast. Oh, he's, just, he's just a sexy Puerto Rican. Let's go. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, I get his song stuck in my head, especially the part where he goes, uh, eat your heart out, girls. Oh, Hands my. off the merchandise. I'm like, ah, shut up. Oh, let's go. <laughs> Delivered by the UPS. Wants to touch you anyway. You, you, get, you remember when, when, uh, Mr. When Perfect, he would, baby. Right, he'll, he'll leave the ring and like Shawn Michaels have left the ring. The building. That's right. Shawn <laughs> <Right. That's laughs> Michaels like, have left the building. building. That's mm-hmm. right. <laughs> Yeah, Vince trusted Sherry because Sherry knew what she was doing. She had been around for a while. Um, <clears throat> yes. Um, no, nobody's hacking my phone. Nobody's making Shawn Michaels the. Yes, the Simbo's live at ten <laughs> Eastern. So we'll, <laughs> I have about Mr. A, Perfect got theme song as but, my ringtone. Yeah, I mean, you have to hack Witchy's <laughs> phone and make that. No, ringtone. Oh, no, I'm about no. to call your staff. It Let me Mr. see. Is that Shawn Perfect. Michaels? Where's my gun, mm. man? <laughs> yeah. yeah I lo- and that the one match, uh, there was a there's a girl on there named Star Smith and uh, on X who's friends with me, and we were talking about that. Oh. She's like, Oh, well, Kurt never beat Brett. I went, mm, yeah, he did. Mm. It was on prime time, but yeah, he did. Yeah. And and what's mm. funny is about in the in the beginning of the match. Kirk goes mm-hmm. like this and misses. And I almost wanted, mm-hmm. like, I, I would love to interview Brett and be like, did you say something to him? Like, hey, I think you missed something. <laughs> yeah, that but you would... can see Kirk kick it, you know? Kirk kicks mm-hmm. the gum after he misses yeah, it. it. <laughs> but they had what to be rude each other the whole time. They had to be like, hey, you missed something. Oh, shut up. Mm-hmm. You know, that kind of thing. Because you hear, uh, at one point, you hear when he has Brett down, you hear Kirk mm-hmm. go, I'm going to finish this piece of shit off. <laughs> <laughs> twice, <laughs> he does it twice. Wow. I'm just like he said, piece of shit. <laughs> uh, anyway, I wanna, back to the Montreal Oscar. Yeah, I want to bring that uh, back to the Montreal. My, I, I, someone bring up that that in in story, that whole uh, Montreal school job they did that with when Wendy Richter. That was the something. original screw job. Yeah, that was with Moolah, and yeah, that was one of because the because. Yeah. Yeah, because Vin, Wendy wanted more money. She was the women's <laughs> champion, and Vince was like, "I'm not paying you more." <laughs> and then he, she is like, "You know what? Uh, she had a fabulous, fabulous moolah dressed up as the Spider Lady that night." Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Vince was like, "Then the referee, you know, and they we double do, crossed her, and she beat yeah, the shit they, out the of referee the counted real. one, two, three quickly, yeah. and then she realized, and then she pulled the mask off, and it was moolahs. Oh, moolahs, yeah. moolah under the mask. Rilla Monsoon is like, "Oh wow, we didn't know." You know, one of these things, you know, and then she starts hitting her for real, but Mula no sells. It's like, oh, yeah, but you know, she's doing this shit with the belt. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's no selling. It's like, and then Wendy, she said she left the ring, got her stuff, never spoke to Vince again until like a few years ago when she got into the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And she never saw Vince again, never spoke to him like again that, until a few years ago. I like that one uh, interview because Gene just starts laughing. I, in fact, I was watching some Gene bloopers, Gene, Mean Gene. Mm-hmm. And she sure. goes, I'm not going to let, I'm not about to let anybody uh, uh, put me on my back and cover me. And he just <laughs> busts out laughing. They yes, left I that in. That. If you watch, I think it's yeah, WrestleMania yeah. 2. <laughs> they left that in that <laughs> interview that where he's just like, okay, back to oh, you. Okay. Ew, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> back to you, Vince. <laughs> I was like, whoa. It's like, uh, that's sus. It's like, I'm not going to let nobody get my back and cover me. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to let me get <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, back, back to you, wow. Vince. We gotta, back yeah, back to you, Vince. We don't know what else he's gonna say. You know where his mind went. <laughs> hey, got hey guys. By the way, congratulations. You have a, uh, I think a bot. Hey, love your broadcast. Want to want to boost your channel? Run or get yeah, a promotion to reach active uh-huh. audiences, gain massive followers, and have fun interacting while streaming. <laughs> yeah, Interested? Chat with me on Instagram. No, I don't. Yeah, do it's definitely Instagram. a bot. Yeah, but yeah, bot. Sean said, I, I always believed that Wendy knew it was Moolah. How could she have not have known? Well, according to her, she says, well, the spider lady was different, 
when I locked up with her, but I couldn't really tell what was going on. You know, that was mm-hmm. at least that was what she was saying in her interview. Mm-hmm. Like when yep. she locked up, it was different. It's like, who is this woman? You know, it's like and then, but she didn't really say anything until when she realized after the match, she pulled her mask off. It's fucking Mula. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's fucking Mula, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, and I anyway. love that, uh, that, that that Sean and uh, Brad have amended. That's I think at the end. Yeah, uh, then, uh, Brett yeah. was. I did see that meeting. Uh, you know, Brett was talking about. Oh, you know, I have grandchildren now, and and Sean goes, "Well, my daughters aren't that old yet, <laughs> and they better not do that. <laughs> Make him a grandpa anytime soon." Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, with Sean that. with the yeah. raspy boys, like, well, you know, uh, you know, and I was a, you know, a different person, and that person different. You know, I think, you know, Sean, and I was, I was watching some interviews. Sean would say, look, listen, and I'm a believer that everything happens for a reason. Right. And I I, I would say that that what came out of that, whatever the mm-hmm. case might be, we got Stone Cold. What else happened after that? You know, I'm just saying. Mm, yes, but I, 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 I agree with Sean that somehow, like I said, with Kurt's <laughs> nudging, you know, him meeting Kevin Dunn and stuff. And again, Austin talks about this in many of his interviews. If you look up uh, Stone Cold and, you know, his thoughts on Kurt Hennig, um, I just think that Austin eventually would have come through uh, regardless of what happened with Brett. But it's definitely Mm -hmm. a big, you know, slingshot forwards, especially when Triple H was supposed to win the King of the Ring, but got punished because of the whole click uh, thing uh, in the ring in 96. So, but, um, yeah, I, I do think, uh, and really what the Montreal screw job did was expose this. Hey, you know, th- sometimes yeah, Montreal. Hard. this does some, you know, this does happen. And, and yeah, it's real. It was a real fallout for Brett, but you really expose the business that this is yeah. all just the work. It's. Yeah, and Brett, I mean, and Jim Cornette, one of the things he said is no way Brett Hart would go to the <laughs> newspapers and tell everybody. It's Brett Hart. His father's too. He would never expose the business. And the first mm-hmm. thing he does is go to the newspapers mm-hmm. and say, I didn't lose, though. Yeah, he did. I got screwed. Yeah. <laughs> I got screwed, right. Mm-hmm. And that's when Vince came on and said, you know what? Vince didn't screw Brett. Brett screwed Brett. That yeah. was that was when Mr. Yeah. Mc, you could see Mr. McMahon coming out. That yeah. character, Vince, you know, Mr. McMahon was actually coming out of him, and that's what led to the Austin mm-hmm. versus McMahon feud. And yeah, there's a lot of things that could have happened if Brett had just dropped the belt to Sean, um, mm. if he had just done what you know Bischoff had said. Um, but you know, Brett's got pride, and and you know, that's he loved the business. Plus, plus, in his own backyard <clears throat> of Canada. No. Yeah. And like I and said, then- <clears throat> you know, like I said, it, it's it is kind of like, you know, Vince took the hitman character, took him out to pasture and blew his brains out. Yeah. And Vince it and Vince chose Sean over Brett. It was obvious. And I've mm-hmm. always hated that. Brett called Meltzer from the hotel. Meltzer calls the newspapers. Yeah, I mean Yeah, uh, that was, was why Meltzer yeah. actually wasn't cuckoo for Coco Puff. Yeah, yeah. He but was- I mean <laughs> Yeah, he actually interviewed a lot of people. Meltzer was good at his job back then. Yeah, he interviewed yeah. people and you know got the real story and the real truth of what happened. So, yeah, yeah Bret Hart it's, was it's, a, it, 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 it. It sucks to see the fall like that, especially when you know people who put in like a lot of good work and then just. Mm-hmm. And then to have I mean, it, I, I see, like I've seen that. it before. I've, yeah, nine, I've seen I've seen it happen before, like like not to that grand scale, but like here in Chicago, like you see a lot of radio and. TV people go down that route. It's like I... then after that, Survivor Series '97, Vince chose Sean. Oh, by the way, Sean, I want you to drop the belt to Steve Austin at WrestleMania, my new star. Six months later, whenever it was. <laughs> well, Sean, so was well, like, Sean, well, Sean was already a problem unto its own right. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see right. why he had to do that. Oh, we want you to drop the belt to Steve. He's going to be the next number one guy. Yeah, so, and yeah. that, mm-hmm. and there's also speculation that Sean wasn't ready to drop the belt to Stone Cold. That he wasn't going to do that, but his back was pretty much shot by then. Yeah, yeah. And Undertaker threatened to kid to keep the shit out of him if he did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because yeah. if you remember that story, he, were, he taped up his yeah, like, yeah, yeah, the belt. Like, you know, you, you got to see yeah. me. Yeah, you well, see me after the show. <laughs> what what does what, what does that say about Taker though? Like you know the fact that even even he had that amount amount of push and pull to tell him like he even he side with Brett like hey look at the end of the events I work for you but hey you gotta get decked out 
Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Because that's 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 like the power dynamic of what Taker had over the WWE. That's uh, why a lot of people respect that dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which 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 leads which leads to a theory that I have for that infamous plane incident because Taker wasn't on that plane, and I know for a fact that if Taker was there, ain't none of that shit was going down. I say so. Yep, Mark. Mark wasn't a, a again a plane ride from hell. Is my original plan for this episode, but I scrapped it because I didn't want Steph to be upset on her birthdays. But yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, right. yeah so because be guess who got the fallout for that? It was Kurt. Kurt and Scott Hall lost yeah. their contracts. Yeah, that was my original and plan. The it plane was bullshit ride from hell, because but... <laughs> again, Vince had done the exact same thing that uh, Brock and Kurt had done. Uh, the week or the time before the plane ride before and no one said shit about that no one lost their contracts Kurt Angle didn't lose his contract and and Taker was on that flight Taker mm-hmm. was on that flight because Taker was like Kurt don't do anything he's talking to Kurt Angle Kurt don't do anything um and Vince is one you know all drunk and stuff and trying mm-hmm. to get in Kurt's face and you know and uh I bet you can't take me pal or whatever <laughs> angel you do yeah. it i can't do yeah. it but yeah um wow. it 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 was not fair and even jim ross admitted in the dark side of the ring of the plane ride from hell mm. that mm-hmm. kurt heard the fate that that rick flair should rick flair should be in jail he should not have a contract he should not be anywhere near wrestling for what he did on the plane ride from yeah hell. He, so he's fuck still him. under contract to AEW. <laughs> <clears throat> Ric Flair, it's he still gets he paid not, a multi-million dollar salary by Tony <laughs> Khan, who's a mark. But let's see. Back Cookie says, I'm going to be on with Angel next I week. I will beat you why up, Kurt Henning looks like a Don't even go there. Kirk. Don't oh, even go oh, there. I, I will beat oh, okay, the fucking shit okay, out okay, of back. you, Back Cookie's looking for some heat. What's going <laughs> yeah, on? Yeah. I will there. mess hey. you up. And first of all, Back Cookie keeps on bringing the fact that I got arrested. Tell me, oh, uh, at least I didn't sing. Hey, I had to sing to save myself. <laughs> snitches I, get snitches, baby. Uh, it was I, could, I, I could just tell bad cookies. I'm from the Bronx. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I will beat you up. Yeah, no, I mean, it's there's like- no way, Charlie. He's not like Charlie Kirk. In real life, Kurt would have been, because he, he admitted that he voted for Jesse Ventura. So his politics align with pretty much everyone here um, yeah. because he voted for Jesse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't well, make Curtis, me come over there. Well, yeah. Curtis, so, so, so Mr. Perfect was from Minnesota, right? He was from Minnesota, uh, yes. right? And, and, and not so far from uh, Prince. They and Prince had some wild, you know, yeah. uh, the, the singer Prince. Minnesota whatever. produced a lot of top talent oh. in wrestling. Rick Rude, <laughs> you th- Scott Norton, mm-hmm. uh, Sean Waltman well, was Waltman. from Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, Prince, Animal Prince, and Hawk. Prince. Animal and Hawk. Yeah, they were all from that Minnesota <laughs> And yeah, they think they're different too. Dynasty. Yeah, they think uh, a little bit different, more independent. Can, I can see. You could think yeah. modern wrestlers like Kurt Angle or Char- uh, Chad Gables from Minnesota. Right. Um, uh, Kurt wow. Angle's from Pittsburgh. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. he, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I meant to say, um, what's his face? I meant to say Brock Lesnar. He's from Minnesota. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. he's from Wisconsin. No, he Brock's went to the Minnesota. university. Yeah, he went. If you ever heard Jim Cornette right. talk about Brock Lesnar. Oh yes, he 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 went to the he, he went to college in Minnesota. So he went that, to college in Minnesota. Yep. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, we do have ten minutes left, so we got to start okay. wrapping Wait, this up. <laughs> questions? We didn't do the pop in quiz. The pop quiz. Pop quiz about. You know. Oh, about, uh, about the Montreal Screwjob. Yes. Well, we pretty much all know what's going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that right. Shawn Michaels is the greatest wrestler. No. Of all time. <laughs> Let's go. Perfect. <laughs> Mr. Perfect, baby. Nobody beats Mr. Perfect. Nobody. Yeah. I said said Shawn Michaels. (laughs) Shawn Michaels sucks. He couldn't even lace up Kurt's boots. Come on. Sean Sean couldn't (laughs) even. He was like, he he's better than the wrestlers from today, but he the, the, he was it, it, he was born and it, luckily you know he learned how to wrestle even though he was too high flying and he was doing all that stuff and he wasn't and second got, generation like Brett and Kurt yeah and these stuff and a lot of these guys <laughs> again stole saw Shawn Michaels and like oh we can do that but no psychology none of the storytelling nothing this is do the moves he did for no reason so then again, the same thing happening with Mick Foley with all his matches. Oh, yeah, great hardcore matches, brutal, but 
they, they none of these younger guys understand the psychology, the match style, the 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 stories, nothing. They just do the moves for no reason. So these guys are very talented, and I respect them all. But the modern wrestlers have taken their stuff and bastardized it to the point where it's like, what the fuck. <laughs> And then I go back to 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 Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels feud is one of the best. Um, I, I I think even regardless of what you feel about Shawn Michaels, I I mean Shawn Michaels is the perfect foil for Bret Hart. I'm just saying. Oh yeah, I, I agree with I, that. Yeah, I guess you, you could know? say that. Yeah, they were, just... they were. And Shawn Michaels and Bret were magic in the ring. I mean, oh, I, I yeah, remember. there's no doubt about that. They actually, you know, would feed off of each other. But I yeah. think Even when Bret it comes right Hart down said to he's it, he's one of the top five. But I mean, Shawn Michaels wasn't ready for the big screen because, again, that that's what happened after WrestleMania 12. Bret dropped the belt to him. Shawn wasn't ready for the no. big leagues, and mm-hmm. so he spiraled downwards. And he, he, I I completely agree with uh, the he, fact that Shawn was not ready for that championship run. Yeah, he wasn't drawing. Yeah, I mean, right. the houses were down, the ratings were down in 95, and it's like, about to say that. and then Brett was like, oh, yeah, let's crash. He's crashing and burning, and, you know, mm-hmm. and he was right that he would crash and burn, not because because of his personality and because of his, um, the fact he couldn't draw. So it was like. But, 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 but let me say, in defense of, uh, of Sean, like. Sean you know, was the perfect back. I'm so asshole. sorry, kid. <laughs> what? Kilted. Oh. Uh, Kilted kid. Oh. Yeah. Real what? men wear kilts. The kilt is on its way. I ordered it already. All right. Oh. So I made sure I got the perfect yes. size. For right. myself. So Let's it's going to be here Tuesday. And here's, here's what's going to happen. So it's going to be not this week coming up, but the next week. Monday through Sunday. So I said seven days because that's a so week. The first week of May. So wait, yeah, it actually will be the first week of May. So mm. wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I'm wait. waiting for some stuff too. I'm no, waiting so, for a nice little Puerto Rican Monday, 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 Going up till uh Sunday, uh May 5th. Is it kid is Scottish? What, what is it, kid? No, no, I'm no, no, no. He just promised us for all he these th- years or for this year, oh. if he made it to 50k, that he would wear a manly man's oh. kilt. kilt. And oh, I always kidding. tell him, remember what Piper said, real men what? wear kilts. Right, so right. there's wow. no shame. No so shame. April, so so April 29th up until May 5th, I'll be wearing that manly man's kilt. Wow. <laughs> Yes, so there we, we go. We did it, baby. There's, we did there's it. Kit, there's Hardland wow. Media Substack. Yes, but chat. also, but also, Good I know job. INN. Like, uh, we got we got another show that's coming up too. So I think we should. Yeah, yeah we do have to wrap up. But yes. I just wanted to, I wanted to bring this up. Wait, Sean is a complete responsible for the houses being down. Kevin Nash was hot trash as well. Yes, Kevin Nash was champion most of that time too. Yeah, no but, one liked uh, Kevin Nash's champion. By the way, Kit McIntyre. Kit McIntyre. <laughs> woo! <laughs> You better, ah! start, you better start learning the Scottish accent, baby. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. The bad right, guys. <laughs> yes, no himbo is coming right up in the next few minutes, but we do have to wrap up and give our final thoughts. So we got about seven minutes. So, so uh, let's go around, Robin. Kit, Kit you start uh, yeah. f- finishing mm-hmm. thoughts. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so uh, I'll just keep it short and simple. Obviously, what happened to Brett to hit my heart was wrong and unjust, uh, but it forever uh, caused the change in wrestling that we see now today and still resonate and should resonate with future generations in regards to how this business started and what it did to so many individuals. But uh, Brett Hart will forever be always known in my mind as one of the best, and he was screwed over, um, but... He still is a fan favorite and someday justice, you know. I think I think he's got justice on his side with the people on the internet. So there you go. Yeah. Absolutely. So my my, my take would be that like, listen, everything happens for a reason. I guess the universe would have some way or somehow. As I always say, the, the universe will school somebody for the best of others, for sure. And this is one of those situations. Shawn Michaels became uh, the champion. He will. He became the champion. He stood the champion. He lost the belt to Stone Cold. Whatever the case might be, Shawn Michaels is one of the greatest. Bret Hart is one of the greatest. Mr. Perfect is one of the greatest. Thank you. That's why we love wrestling, and that's why we love professional wrestling, because it's one storyline that we can never make up. No. Nothing like this will never, ever happen again. God forbid it never happen ever again. That's for sure. No. 
No, it wouldn't happen. Right, and I think that um, the only reason to double cross someone again would be because they're leaving. So, like, if I could see maybe if they had done this when mm -hmm. CM Punk had left WWF for mm -hmm. e, um, AEW, what the hell? Sorry, <laughs> AEW. I could maybe yeah. see Triple H wanting to do that. Maybe there's no animosity there. I'm hoping. But, um, yeah, it did change the business. Um, it's something that was rarely done in WWF. It was more done in the territories. So if someone hadn't the, – the old honor system was when you leave a territory, you drop the belt if you are the champion. That yep. was the honor system and what they had done back in the territories. Jim talks about this very eloquently on his <laughs> omnibus about this. And, yeah, Brett is one of the greats of all time. But he wasn't perfect, baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, but no, uh, it, it is something that the only thing I could see it, it done properly or maybe similar to Bret Hart's uh, double cross would be when CM Punk left WWE, uh, WWE excuse me, for AEW. Um, I could maybe even if T Tony Khan had done the same, but you know you saw that rigor rule about what happened with CM Punk and. and I mean, AEW just embarrassed the hell out of themselves. But, um, but yeah, I think that mm -hmm. um, it, it changed the business for better or good. I don't know. Um, but I know Bret Hart was very sour about it um, for many, many years. And I, I'm glad him and Vince and Sean have all, you know, made up and, and you know, uh, buried the hatchet, so to speak, I guess. But I think it's very... Um, I thought back when it happened, I thought, oh, shit, you know, that's why Brett was coming. Um, I didn't know the whole uh, backstory between it. So um, just to, to tidy up here, um, it was one of the best or worst things, depending on your opinion of it, to ever happen in the wrestling business. It really did change some things in the wrestling business. Um, and it wasn't all work from everybody. Again, Brett was pissed about it for years. So I think that um, for for Brett, it was, you know, sour. It left a bad taste in his mouth. Um, you know, you kind of don't want to see that happen to a great wrestler, especially a second generation one. They could have done the same thing to Kurt, you know, if Kurt had done what Brett had done um, or if, Brett, if Kurt was in his shoes. Um, but I think that, you know, there's also I would like to go into a deep dive of Kurt's uh, relinquishing from WWF to WCW because there's a lot of mm -hmm. speculation around that too. Um, okay. But uh, I definitely think that it, it changed the business, whether whether that was for the good, I don't know. But it did get us Rick Rude on WCW again, and baby, <laughs> Rick Rude was back. <laughs> <laughs> he came home, baby. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Host. Um, well, we got two minutes left, and all I want to say is I wish that we could have gone longer, but unfortunately, you know, we do have to go. Yeah. And I want to thank everyone very much for joining us in the chat. Please, please like and subscribe to the channels. Links are down there, you know, all that good stuff. And also, I want to thank everyone on the panel for coming on and discussing mm -hmm. this. I wish we could have gone longer, but unfortunately, we can't. And, you know, we I had a great time with this, and we'll have to do a part two or part three. We part can two. talk about We'll do an omnibus later. <laughs> now it's time for me to, to smoke that. up and light up 420 because I got a lot to celebrate for. Happy oh, birthday yeah. to me. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> and, and Kilted Kids. And Kilted Kids next week. April, we did it. April, baby, we get to see a real man wearing uh -huh. a kilt. Thank you, Beck. Manly man. Manly man. All right, Are until you... next time, it's 9.59 Eastern, and we have to go right now. So see you guys right, next week. Thanks. Thank you for the show. And... Bye, everybody. Thank you bye -bye. so much.